The economy of Francesco is not a utopia. Our cities, communities, businesses, universities, schools and offices, warehouses, forests, rivers, fields, air, these are our utopia. That is, the good place where every day we write a new story, a great collective tale. The economy of Francesco has taught has taught us a new relationship, a new fraternity, and suggested new words. A new spiritual spring has begun. Welcome back to Assisi. This is Economy of Francesco. Welcome to all of you who are connected today from many countries around the world, alone, in groups, early in the morning or late at night. Thank you and welcome to our 25th hour, the fourth EOF Global Gathering. Here is Francesca speaking, and next to me, Enrique from Brazil. And we are here with you to have a wonderful celebration time together. Welcome, everyone. Olá a todos. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francesca. And hello to our friends here in the studio and to you all at home, of course. We wanted to open this meeting with Pope, with Pope Francis, who, after his two hours with us in Assisi last year, left the stage as if to tell us now it's up to you. And here we are, continuing the race to change the world by changing the economy. Yeah, it's going to be a very intense and rich program, rich three hours. So please make yourself comfortable. We are going to start right away with all the experience we have gathered over the years. And we will listen to music. We will also party, while at the same time, the time for face to face with Francis will help us to slow down and center. Yeah, for sure. And we will then recall some of the anniversaries celebrated this year oh, yeah. and connect with many friends around the world. Explore economic issues with Daron Achemoglu and Academy researchers and unveil the winners of the Stories We Are contest. Finally, we are going to listen to Pope Francis' message, which will open us to the themes and appointments of the new year. And as always, we also remind you that translations are available here below. You can find that on the description of the main channel, the YouTube channel, the international one. So you'll find Italiano, Spanish, Portuguese, and Francais. And later, we will also find out how to interact live with us. Because remember, we are on air from Assisi, from the Theatre of Seraphic Institute. So a place and a community where every day we experience a deep care of the person as a whole by combining ethical prin principle, scientific evidence and clinical experience. Broadcasting this fourth event from the Seraphic is a special opportunity for, for all of us to reflect on a new economy, keeping the faces of those who need help the most in our eyes and our hearts to build a just, equitable world, leaving no one behind. And man cannot speak. The eye is not satiated with looking, nor is the ear ever satiated with hearing. Call it rights. Poverty of speech is always poverty of the eye and the ear. We are destitute of words, looks and hearing, and the multiplication of words, typical of our time, amplifies their weariness. That is why a fundamental operation to be carried out today 
is to make old words say new and living things and to find new words to say what appears unspeakable because it is unreleased. Words live in the air and their sound makes them real ones. The air is light, it smells, it enlightens us. A dimension where space and time expand and welcome us without measuring or oppressing us. The sky is a space of gift. The time of the seasons, the water of the clouds, the warmth of the stars, they are all gifted. Today, we hear each other very often, but we listen too little. To hear, we only need to turn up the volume, but to listen, we need to stretch our ears. Because communicating means giving the gift of ourselves, of our time, our work, our emotions. Thus, words become real. Now we want to listen to the real words of the economy of Francesco protagonists. And why this is possible? Because since the message of Pope Francis, many people of the economy of Francesco have taken action uh, and their initiatives have grown like seeds, like plants on a field. I am Luca De Carolis and with Valentina Larcon, we are the harvesters. Ciao a tutti. Hello to everyone, ciao a tutti, hola a todos. Uh, yes, Luca, uh, we're like harvesters and we went into the field. So we invite young people from Economy Francesco to tell us about their projects and stories and activities. In a few weeks, we collect more than 60 proposals from 27 countries around the world. Many thank you, thank you. to everyone who applied really. to the harvest. Incredible. Some of them are seeds, like for example, Evelyn Sanchez from Venezuela with their team. They're proposing a framework for business and Marjorie Lewis um, and Ezequiel Vedena, they're proposing solutions for water conservation for IT. On this journey, uh, we want to um, go to see many different initiatives from books and projects. So let's begin with a book, La Granja de Francesco. Gracias, Vale. Mi nombre es María Virginia Solis Juanich, de Argentina, 
y de la aldea. Thank you very much, Palen. My name is uh, Alejandra Guanes, and my project is Happiness and Justice. I remember that when I was in the secondary school in Argentina, I was feeling a big uncertainty of what I was going to do in the future. I think that many of us have experienced something similar. The only thing that was clear to me was what I didn't want to do. And many times what we don't want to do help us to see what we really want to do. I remember my mission experience in a town in the Cordoba province that is called Lucio de Maslicha. That town developed to a natural saline field. A train was built up and a settlement that was gathering workers and families that were dedicated to the salt extraction. When those salt mines stopped producing salt and stopped being profitable, Lucio was abandoned. What they did, it didn't change was the story of the families their lives, their friendships, their daily life. Most of them were without any alternative to work, and they were surviving thank you to economic help. An afternoon, a colleague of the mission asked me, hey, you that do study economic sciences, what do you think we can do in order to help these families? And Luca, what does this uh, thank you very much. mean? So let's take a look at the diversity and richness of uh, initiatives inspired by economy, Francesco, to three questions. Mm -hmm. So question number one, what is the origin of the initiatives? How they are born? Two, as, we're plan uh, as the plants are, how the initiative has a growing process? How was it? What happened there? And the third question is, the day of the harvest came. So what are the fruits of the project? How are they shared with the others? Vale, I think these are three great questions to start, but before starting, okay. I would like just to remember that this part, in this part, we will see startups, uh -huh. initiatives, uh, entrepreneurial initiatives inspired by the economy of Francesco. So this is our main topic. Uh -huh. And we have with us Mateus from Poland. Welcome, Mateo. Hello, Mateus. Welcome. Um, and online, we should have uh, Miriam from Italy and Anna from the Philippines. Ciao, Miriam. Ciao, guys. Can you Ciao. hear us? Ciao. <laughs> Do you hear us well? Yes? Yeah. Great. Yes. That clear. Fantastic. Perfect. Good, good. So, the floor is yours. Mateo, go. Miriam. Miriam, sorry, sorry. Okay. Buonasera a tutti. Io sono Miriam e vivo in Italia, dove lavoro nella piccola società agricola della mia famiglia. Vorrei raccontare... Good evening, everyone. I'm Miriam and I live in Italy, where I work in my family's small agriculture company. I would like just to tell a brief about these fruits of my work as a farmer. In our daily lives, we would try to cultivate in a different way our oppressed and devastated land, which Pope Francis points to among the most abandoned and mysteries poor. We produce certified organic vegetables do not use any kind of fertilization and work only the surface, the top layer of the soil, without turning it over. Food grown in this way is healthy, controlled by certification bodies and contains no harmful active ingredients from pesticides. Those who consume such vegetables know the product origin, the guarantees and of course it recognizes the taste. We directly sell to end customers without intermediaries to give the right value to our work. We are accredited as an educational farm operating in a territory with the aim of becoming a place of welcome, training and discussion on the issues of agriculture culture, agroecology, and lo local economy. The daily work in the field is for sure tiring. However, the constant contact with Mother Earth is a source of regeneration. Despite many difficulties, being aware of producing genuine food and working with the earth and for its good is certainly at the basis of the reasons why we are paving this way. Thank you very much, Miriam, for being with us. So let's welcome Anna Rose from Philippines. Anna Rose, let's, yeah, yeah, come, come in. Good day, everyone. I'm Anna from the Philippines. Please allow me to introduce my project initiative. Indigenous people in the Philippines come across several challenges. Some of the most pressing are shortage in food resources, 
inadequacy in clean drinking water, and the lack of livelihood. In the previous years, several indigenous women and children died due to dehydration and waterborne diseases. There are about 11 million Filipino families that do not have access to clean and safe drinking water, and there is a 101% increase in cases of food and waterborne diseases during the first quarter of 2023, with children being affected the most. Project SWAP aims to provide the indigenous people with access to clean and safe water. It strives for the relentless pursuit of the right of every human being to clean and safe water, dignified sanitation, and hygiene practices in line with the United Nations' six sustainable development goal of ensuring the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Guys, this is, this is incredible. And I'm learning a lot from these initiatives. Thank you for, uh, for sharing, uh, Anna, Anna Rose. And now uh, I also want to mention Nuru Lasnat because, of course, uh, it's not only the Philippines, but there are also other places of the world, like Bangladesh, uh, in which uh, we have difficult situations. Uh, and his project, his Step for Ocean Initiative, positively impacts awareness of children, local communities, and marine ecosystems. And now, Mateus, uh, we can move uh, nearer to us, to, to Poland, right? <laughs> uh, so how has the, the, the experience been for you? Uh, thank you, Valentina source. and Luca. Thank you for having us here. Uh, actually, I would like to take I would like to take you uh, a little bit further away uh, to to Nigeria. Uh, the farm of Francesco was born within the Agriculture and Justice Village, and this year we have completed our first inaugural farmer training mm -hmm. uh, that happened um, in Nigeria in March 2023, mm -hmm. uh, lasting for a week. That was made possible by Carla Kuti's award together with private partners' donations. Oh. Um, and the training was co-created by Pax Herbal team, our uh, Pax Herbal um, team uh, delivery partner on the ground, mm -hmm. and uh, deliver at Holly's Wellness Center uh, in um, Lagos State, Nigeria. Okay. Twelve farmers, let me read their names because they are very important. They are the yes. protagonists. Yes, 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 yes. Adebola, Christopher, uh, David, Emmanuel, Festus, Ikena, Kehinde, Olaide, Olukbenga, Olupade, uh, Paul and Samson join our training, which was structured across three key pillars, mm -hmm. economics, um, regenerative agriculture and spirituality. Mm -hmm. The training was harvest moment for us, but very much it was a seeding moment for the farmers uh, okay. trained by us. Wow. And already two of them cooperated with each other to introduce beehives to one of the farms. Nice. Uh, three others uh, created their own training programs following our training, wow. in which more than 300 people were uh, trained so far. Mm -hmm. um, and last month, okay. to celebrate those successes, mm -hmm. we organized a community meetup uh, yeah. of the farmers, which all of the farmers joined together with the delivery partner team, okay. uh, which is a real success because yes. internet connection in Nigeria is a daily struggle. Oh, yeah. And the energy could feel in this mm. room, sharing the stories of struggle, but overcoming those being protagonists oh. was truly tremendous. So uh, thank you to everyone uh, that wow, made this you. amazing success possible. And above all, thank you to God. So very interesting journey, yes. right, Valentina, <laughs> yeah, into yeah, yeah. a reality well. that touches multiple places, yeah. right? Uh, thank you. So thank you for this, Mateus, for sharing with us. And now let's hear from Mexico and Uganda, um, Erika and Annette. Colaboro con la cooperativa de mujeres celtales Jumpa Jalotanil, que en celtal significa armonía del corazón. So we come from a community that is called Celtal de Corazones, and this means Celtal people from the herd that is located in the north side of Chiapas. The cooperative organization is born with the intention to create a democratic participation in their communities and to give women and integrate them to productive economic processes that may allow each of them to have an autonomy within their households. This cooperative has been an alternative for the economy for the society and fosters the education in terms of finance, gender inclusion, and other topics. And here we can produce the handcraft and different wavings of the region in order to preserve their 
culture and to be friendly with the Mother Earth. This part is called Letil Kuchat, that means live good for many originary peoples, and it's a way to take care of our common ground in the Tzeltal town. I'm the founder and team leader, farm and art space community initiative in Bohunga, in Masaka district, Uganda. It's a community-based organization, farmer-based, that I started this year on 6th of February, and my inspiration is from Agriculture and Justice Village, Economy of Francesco, and also my inspiration is from Farm of Francesco, that who have really supported me in this space of developing my skills in regenerative agriculture, advocating for regenerative agriculture, and starting businesses that are regenerative. Thank you so much. Enjoy the event. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Erika, um, for sharing with us your stories, your startups, uh, growing process and fruits. Uh, it's amazing the reach of diversity that um, Economy Francesco Live gave us to us in this period. What, what do you think? Uh, well, first of all, Valentina, I would like to make best wishes, my best wishes for all these projects that we have seen. Yeah, yeah, me too. And then uh, I would like to move to a musical moment. All right. Uh, with the collective uh, Nayado, Nayado uh -huh. Factory Bruce Springsteen cover by Rocky Fox. Okay. Ciao, 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 ciao. What a beautiful song, wow. don't you think? Wow. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Niado always touches our heart very deeply. Indeed. Well, thank you, Luke and Valentina and all your guests. But now, Enrique, we haven't greeted him yet. Our DJ, Bisho Elito from Egypt. Alelito! He has been with us last year, you know, and we will also delight us during the program again with beautiful music and soundtrack. But now let's try to shorten the distance and let's be heard. So aren't you curious, my friend? Today we are writing the new words of an economy with a soul. And we want to continue doing it with you all together. So we start asking you, which kind of words are most important to you that are slowly enriching the narrative capital of economy of Francesco. Exactly. So we invite you to write your keywords on social media or in the YouTube channel chats you are following us from, or send us a written or audio message via WhatsApp to this number here below, plus 39, 35, 7, 69, 53, 54, 5. 
briefly explaining around 30 seconds tops, okay, yeah. let's agree on that, and how, to, how those words have affected your life as change makers, scholars, or entrepreneurs. And make sure to keep interacting on all social media with our official hashtags, which are here below too, which are EOF Global Gathering, Francesco Economy, and EOF On Air 2023. Yeah, we want to be in touch. And now, speaking of words, in the meantime, we have Lugino Bruni that has reached us. And he is, as we know, the EOF scientific coordinator, a role that means a lot. It means listening, subsidiarity, starting up processes, but also creating opportunities. So first of all, thank you for all that. And then, Professor, what is this 25th hour? What does it represent for EOF? Thank you. Grazie. You're welcome. The idea of an extra hour, when the 20 hour day is over, has inspired novels and movies, films, beginning with the, the title of a 1949 novel by the Romanian writer Constantin Virgil Gheorghiu. The 25th hour, hour. is uh -huh. the, the yes. name. Uh -huh. Why we chosen this uh, image. this image, this uh, this idea? Because uh, we have consumed the 24 hours of the day, the hours that were available to us since the Earth SOS was launched more than half a century ago. It's an SOS of the Earth, of the planet, but it's also an SOS of the poor, mm -hmm. the discarded, many indigenous people. We remember last year in. A, the SOS of many humiliated women, too many children. I cannot, uh, I cannot the but thinking to the, to the Iran situation. Yeah, the list today. is long, we know. Yes, indeed. Too many children, and also the suffering of nature, the suffering of plants, of animals, the biodiversity of the forest, the atmosphere, and the entire planet. The hours of the day are over, but we are entering into the last hour, but uh, we are failed to notice. However, one person, more than half a century ago, understood, at least one person, maybe much more than one, uh, understood that uh, we, are, we were close to the end of the day. That was Don Lorenzo Milani, an Italian priest, uh, and a real, a true prophet of the uh, last century. He wrote in 1958 uh, his letter, Lettera dall'oltre tomba, Letter from Beyond the Grave, to the future, future Chinese missionaries who would arrive in his imagination to Europe in the year 2000 to re-evangelize Europe. Be because Europe in the meantime, Christianity has disappeared, according to him, in his opinion. The conclusion of his letter is very strong. He wrote in Italian, non abbiamo odiato i poveri, abbiamo solo dormito. We did not hate the poor, we have only slept. Ma quando ci siamo svegliati era troppo tardi, i poveri erano andati via. But when we but then up, when we wake late, up, the poor had left us behind. We, are, we all have slept too. And while we slept the hour past, at first slowly, then gradually faster. But thank God, we have another hour. Yeah. Who, but who give us, who give this hour to us? Who is the donor of an extra hour? God is giving us another hour, another gift hour, because God listened to the prophets of our time. Listen. Um, St. Francis, Liz, Pope Francis, at least all of you, that you are praying and asking for uh, something more, for an extra time, uh, while uh, our generation of adult people, we consume all the time, but uh, God, uh, we are still here, we are still alive. You are young, you can, you can, uh, you can imagine something new. I, I was very impressed by the message of the Pope two years ago here in Assisi, mm -hmm. when he wrote, you are the last generation, l'ultima generazione, that can save the planet. Io non esagero, the Pope added. I don't exaggerate. Mm -hmm. And then, that is the, the hope of the Pope. And then, uh, 
I was also impressed by the conclusion of the movie, the 25th hour. Um, that is a beautiful movie with Anthony Quinn, uh, Virna Lisi. <laughs> then, uh, uh, after 11 years, uh, the main protagonist of the, of the movie, uh, Johan, uh, came back, uh, came home from, uh, fr from a lager, mm -hmm. and uh, finally came back home uh, and he, to his wife, Susanna. All newspapers uh, took photos of them, uh, celebrating this good news of his return. But, uh, Susanne and John were not able to smile. Mm -hmm. It was impossible for the journalist to take a photo with a smile because the pain and the suffering was too, was too huge for them. And then uh, to pain, to suffering. I think that you, we, must take pictures today with joy. This is the difference. We are aware of the responsibility. We know that this is the, may be the last hour of the, the planet, but uh, we are the disciples of Francesco, the giullare di Dio, uh, who with the stimmata in his body was still able to sing uh, Cantico delle Creature. And then, uh, finally, we, we, we must live uh, this time with a huge responsibility of the urgency of the time, uh, of the 25th hour given to us, but uh, such responsibility must be lived also with joy because joy is the other name of the economy of Francesco. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much, Professor Bruni. Uh, grazie mille. Uh, really, your words touches our hearts, and we deeply understand now which which does it mean, the 25th hour? Thank you so much. It's a very unique image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And reminding us also that uh, Pope Francis told us uh, two years ago that this is, we are the last generation. This is very impactful. Thank you. Well, we now continue to make room for words, but different words, differently concrete, effective, and inspiring ones. The time has come for the first face-to-face -face with Francis a path through time and space in the footsteps of Francis of Assisi and the great texts of literature and the Bible. narratives that illustrate episodes from St. Francis' life, spanning across art, literature, movies, and even comics. For over 800 years, these mediums have contributed to maintaining the impact of Francis on culture and on people's life. In a sense, Economy of Francesco can be considered a special way to re-narrate Francis which has transformed him into a critical lens to approach the many economic, social, and political challenges of our time. However, much like Giotto's sequence of frescoes in the Basilica of Assisi does not cover the life of the saint in its entirety, there remain untold stories to be unfolded concerning Francis, including those that have yet never been shared or written. Creativity and imagination thus become useful sources to cover the missing links between Francis and the present day world through ever new original stories inspired by questions like, what would Francis think of our society? How would he react 
to the current economic and environmental planetary challenges? How will people respond to the return of St. Francis in this day and age? These questions have inspired the short story we are about to read, titled The Homeless, a simple exercise through which I imagine what would happen if Francis were to live in today's New York City in the eye of a suffering homeless person living in Times Square. Every day, hundreds of thousands of people cross this street. Since the pandemic, even the rats have become regular visitors. In the end, I see no distinction between rats and humans. <laughs> They're both beasts to my eyes. Over 300,000 souls pass through Times Square in a day. I overheard that from two boys chatting the other day. And yet, in this chaos, <laughs> you can still remain invisible. 12,500 people an hour, 208 every minute, and only a few of them have left a, a coin this morning. A meager reward to endure living in a place like this. Is it because of my look? Is it because of, of my smile? Or is it because of what's going on in their heads? You're either part of this lifestyle or you're not. You're either one of them or you're just pathetic, an outsider, an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Yet, not everyone's like this. Think of that other idiot who has been coming here each and every day uh, for the past few weeks only to have his lunch break under that tree. A rich man for sure. And a bit of a queer too, let me say. What way, that way that looks at me so deep, so intense. Give me some money, won't you? No. Instead, he remains there, seated the whole time, feeding the birds. A real moron. Huh? Six dollars for a sandwich only to toss half to the pigeon. He even talked to them, the fool. <laughs> he left his jacket behind too yesterday, a cloak, Burberry. Hmm? They sell it for a thousand bucks online. The guy even had the smarts to live in his Burberry jacket. Accurately folded, as it, if it was a gift, with 50 bucks inside. What a moron. <laughs> it's never happened to me, twice the fool. <laughs> and if one could forget such a booty on purpose. Hmm? Mm. I haven't seen him yet today. Look at them there instead, his birds. <laughs> they look hungry, but to hell with them. Let them starve just like I am now. <laughs> but what if he doesn't come by? Will someone else feed them? They seem to be expecting him too. the queer and what if he didn't leave it there on purpose his cloak narratives aren't just informative they are performative that is capable of leaving a mark on today's world on people's life along this line we invite you to use your creativity and imagination to reflect on one last question. Which untold story about Francis would be useful to accompany our attempt to develop a new economy?
Well, what a challenging question you drop, Stefano. Indeed. So, thank you, thank you very much. And now we are back, EOF on air. So we see that also Monsignor Domenico Sorrentino is reaching us, so Bishop of Assisi and Chairman of the EOF Committee. But before giving the floor to him and uh, listen to his words, we just want to remind you to, to chat, to interact with us, because let's remember we are all together building this new economy. And maybe you can just share with us what this first piece of theater uh, has left to you, your heart. So please. Feel free to, to write and send any kind of message, and we'll be here checking from time to time and to dialogue with you. Remember so, thank that you. this gathering is with all of us, is among all of us. And among uh, the many messages we, we are expecting from you, one, some, of, some of them are a bit special, and we will show you now some video about our ambassadors. I'm so pleased to be able to say hello to all of you. It's, it's such a great pleasure for me to know that youth all over the world are gathering together to try to rethink the core values that shape our governments and our economies. And I've been thinking about this in two ways. So one way, which some of you have heard about before, is about how important care for one another is. And that our structures of work and our whole idea that who we are and what matters in life is what kind of work we do and how hard we work and how much money we make, these are distortions of what the core values are. Of course, we contribute through work, but we need to be able to contribute through work in a way that makes space for the time we need to take care of one another and to reflect deeply about what really matters. And so this brings me to another thing that I've been thinking a lot about which is care for the earth. That just as we need the daily experience of caring for one another in the most material ways, we need to care for the earth actively. We need to get involved with gardening, with caring for the forests. And I think we need to take this all the way to the point of what in my new project, which is called More Than Human Constitutionalism. That we recognize the entire earth community as part of our community that needs to be part of our very governing structure. Thank you. Hello, friends. Gathered for the economy of Francesco. Global gathering. I am delighted to be able to join you like this for a moment as you come together once again to bring all of your courage, all of your conviction, your full imaginations, and all of your listening to hear each other to collaborate and bring the very best energy that you create when you work together to imagine, to communicate and to put into practice the economy and the transformations that we know these times demand of us. Here's to what you do. Caríssimos jovens, sem justiça social não há social justice without social justice there isn't personal just there is a connection between these two justices and it's important to be courageous and and make it happen this connection between the two justices we have three languages to to follow the heart the knowledge it's important to concretize, to build projects that touch poverty, that touch people who live in poverty. It's necessary a, a great movement. That's why us in Florianópolis, we have great projects to the project of the social coin and project of microcredit that builds a perspective to, to, to make the economy happen among the poverty. It's social, economic, and ecologic. We have to recover these three languages and sensibilize our communities.
Molto, molto obrigada, Padre Wilson Grober. Also, thank you to Professor Jennifer Nedensky. Thank you so much, Professor Priest. Aqui estamos. Obrigado por terem se juntado a nós. Estamos atualmente. Again, that moment remains unforgettable. But seeing each other again, even from afar, is also beautiful. It helps mm -hmm. us to walk together, even along the different paths that the economy of Francesco is opening in the world. The economy of Francesco is a process. It's right then that it develops with the logic of sown seeds that sprout and become large trees over time. It's important that they are seeds that feed on the same lifeblood, what the Pope has called the economy of the gospel, embodied in the pact that you signed with him. It is also important that we keep a unified spirit with its point of reference in Assisi and precisely in Saint Francis, from whom Pope Francis himself willingly draws inspiration as he showed again in the very recent exhortation, Laudate Deum. I have thought much about you this past Year. For me, above all, my thing, my thing was to see you every day with the eyes of the heart and to pray for you. I did so by remembering the emotion that so many of you felt passing through the door that the young Francis crossed on the day of his stripping entering rich and living poor, and then giving birth to a new economy, which I like to call the economy of fraternity. And what else could the economy of Francis be, if not the economy of a world in which we recognize each other as brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters with the very nature spelled out in the canticle of Brother Sun, and that we live by drawing out from this truth all the consequences, including the economic ones. If we reflect well, this is a truth implicit in the very word economy, oikos nomos. Oikos is the house, but also the family and hence the place of fraternity. Economy is the fraternity applied to the management of wealth. This was underlined by the blessed economist Giuseppe Tognolo when he defined economic science as the science that is interested in the social order of wealth. Please pay attention to this definition. Wealth has an order, which being a human order, alongside the other dimensions, cannot fail to, to also have an ethical soul. Together, it is a social order, as it concerns not only individual people, but the society in which they are inserted, starting from the family and thus a fundamentally fraternal order. Conscious of this, the first Christians shared even their material goods 
and the sons of Francis would create the Monti di Pietà and a whole concept of the economy in the name of solidarity, the care of creation and peace. This is the soul of the economy of Francesco. It is time, dear young people, that what we are learning and almost breathing becomes an initiative, a project, a proposal at all levels. Courage. What we have built over these years is a heritage that cannot be squandered. You gaze, your gaze upon Assisi will remind you of this. And Saint Francis will not cease to ask for each one of you every blessing from heaven. I wish you a good journey forward. Thank you so much, Bishop. Your, your words are always filled of wisdom, filled grazie, with wisdom. And grazie mille. Thank you. But please stay, stay a bit with us. And now I, I was wondering, so what do you think, Ike? Among those who tuned in with us today, there might still be someone who doesn't know what Economia Francesco is. Mm, maybe. I don't know. But actually, I think it's time for EOF to have its own column as well. That's a good idea. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the EOF News. How did EOF come about? How was it born and how can you be part of this great community? So let's find out it, this together in the next report. We have seen and felt the ever more anguished plea of the year and its poor who cried out for help and for responsibility, for people who will respond and not turn away. We were already committed to creating a new economy. And then a letter from Pope Francis calling the youth to reanimate the economy allowed us to identify with each other, gave us a broader horizon and made us feel part of a worldwide community of young people who have the same vocation. Pope Francis pointed to St. Francis of Assisi as a model of fraternity and care for the poor and the planet. That was a starting point. And along the way, we have given voice and hands to ideas and projects. We are young entrepreneurs, researchers, economists, and change makers from around the world. We come from many disciplines and backgrounds. The pandemic did not stop us. On the contrary, it made us see more clearly the wounds of the world and understand that the economy is too important to the lives of people and the poor not to take care of it all. This diversity led us to create 12 thematic villages that allow us to experience the urgently needed culture of encounter in order to dialogue, consider and discuss global problems. But today, EOF is a long-term home for economic youth thinking and practices related to a view of an integral economy. EOF is an ongoing experience moving through the work in the villages and locally through our local hubs. A process that we are asked to undertake together as a vocation, a culture and a pact.
Well, to sum up, all young people interested in EOF can fill out the form Be Part of It, which is available on the homepage of our website, but also participate in the several proposed activities or promote the new ones, which will then be available on the Leaving EOF page. We are seeing a scroll down of our website right now. So in this section, as well as on the What's On page, is it possible to find all kind of events, local activities and insights from around the world. In September 2022, the young people present in Assisi shared and signed the EOF Pact, available today in several languages, a landing place of hope for humanity that the community is spreading in different work and study places. Thank you to each one of you. Um, their keywords have also inspired an, an academic research recently published. Yeah, so UF lives internationally through the work of the villages and global activities, but also locally through the hubs and at all territorial initiatives. Let's see another summary in the next video. Carissimi e carissimi giovani, l'incontro con l'economia di Francesco ha risvegliato qualcosa che avevate già Dear youth, this has renewed or found new push, uh, something that you have seen when a youngster sees another youngster as peers, uh, living a certain experience, and that this experience is repeated over and over by 100 and more, and hundreds and hundreds of more youth, uh, then this is something bigger. It allows us to change the system and to make it bigger and to allow for something such as the economy to change. And I say this, uh, and I'm serious, I count on you. I count on you. EOF is also growing in education and research, entrepreneurship, innovation and culture, and global and local events. The EOF schools and the EOF summer schools offer high formation on pillars of the economy of Francesco. The schools are not really about finding definite answers, but rather starting a common path to answer prophetic questions, such as commons and relational goods, vegetal paradigm, and narrative and spiritual capital. The EOF Academy is the international young scholars network that aims to promote scientific research on themes related to the economy of Francesco. It annually schedules education activities and fellowship grants. Part of the EOF commitment is also to help spread and grow valuable business seeds. We share inspirational talks, practical skills and helpful tools keeping youth business ideas at the center. We organize 12 thematic villages. These spaces allow us to formulate different aspects and nos permite formular uh, novos conceitos de vida e como viver. Dentro das vilas e UF, as vilas e os clubes e os espaços fomentam uma nova visão, né? novas palavras, novos conceitos né? em âmbito é, local e global. And leaders of other religions. Uh, com base uh, na Igreja Católica, direitos humanos e dignidade. Então, se você quer fazer parte, take the action, ajude-nos, participe. Novas iniciativas são organizadas mundialmente, anualmente, escutando através das vozes das comunidades, respeitando as culturas, criando novos conceitos. Nos encontros, quando encontramos pessoas de outros lugares, temos a oportunidade de aprender não somente línguas, mas conceitos e culturas. It must be prophecy. In this time of changing, we do not always have answers. Nesse momento de mudança, but we can always listen to the questions of young people and all those who ask for another world, another economy. The, the economy, economy of Francesco. There are many projects and initiatives launched this year 
a sign of the East that generates opportunities to meet, exchange, grow, reflect, and leave. And it's important to, to be said that these two videos that you have just seen, they are available in the website and they can be spread all over the world as you wish. Yeah, just, so just to mention some of the projects, you know, we quickly start, for example, Latin America Congress of the Social Doctrine of the Church in Bogota, but then again, the Forum in Casamance, Senegal, involving young people from Mauritani, Cap Vert, La Guinea-Bissau, around the topic ecological economy for lasting peace in sub-Saharan Africa. And also last May, the Mexico State Hub organized an event with 300 young people gathered at La Salle University, in addition to many other initiatives with the Imdosoc Institute. International events include the Ecumenica One in Romaine, the Utopic Fest promoted by Rondine Cittadella della Pace, Economia para Disminuir Inegualdades in Colombia, and the Biblical, the Biblical Festival in Italy, with over 200 middle and high school students. And also sustainability fairs such as the Fala Cosa, Fala Cosa Giusta in collaboration with Economy of Communion and the Village for the Earth, both in Italy or international retreats such as the one promoted by Uniapac at the European level at the Spazio Spadoni Convention for the re-evolution of works of mercy. Yeah, and more space of fraternity uh, around topics as inclusion, peripheries and the fight against hunger can also be mentioned like the recent Pacto Nacional Pelo Combate as Desigualdades in Brasilia or the many initiatives of the Houses of Francis in Turin and in other, in other cities of Brazil, which the involvement of disadvantaged people and representatives of the Campaña de Fraternidade. Getting back to the African continent, last August's Ambozeli mission engaged entrepreneurs, researchers and educators in a 10-day mission to Kenya's Maasai community, which consisted of training sessions on nutrition, health and entrepreneurship. Africa has hosted several other initiatives this past year in Zambia, Mozambique and the Ivory Coast. Oh yeah, and in, in this last country, a group of young people, once back from our event last year, you know, they lived for a few weeks with vulnerable communities, reaching more than 200 people, including different abled orphans, widows, frail old people, and that's what they told us, they shared with us. Parmi les nombreux leçons recueillies, nous avons réalisé que les pauvres n'étaient plus des personnes considérées comme éloignées de nous. Among the various people that we reached, we realized that poor people were part of us and we needed to touch them and to feel them close to us. Have come about through synergies, first among the youth themselves, then with other partners all around the world. Among these friends, we have with us today John Mandel, director of the Laudato Si Action Platform, and also Alonso Llanes, part of the Laudato Si Movement team. Thank you to both of you. Let's go first with John. John, hello, first of all. Hello and there. Good morning. Great, great to see you. So, Good to see you John, all. Thank you. Uh, we have a question for you. How exactly does the platform work and how can we contribute within the economy working group? Well, first of all, it's great to be uh, you, with you all here. I'm in Indianapolis. Alonzo, our platform program manager, is uh, in Paris. Marine is in Monterey, Mexico. The platform, the Ledazzi platform, is an online initiative of the Vatican's Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, aimed at inviting Catholics and those uh, beyond, everyone really, on a journey of ecological conversion toward integral ecology. The initiative became operational just two years ago, and since then, we have signed on more than 8,000 participants worldwide in seven sectors, impacting more than 15 million people globally. Our sector participants include individuals and families, parishes and dioceses, religious communities, healthcare networks, and economic realities such as businesses. And it also includes educational institutions where we have more than 200 universities signed on and over a thousand schools. So what does the platform do? It offers resources to the participants, including templates and guides and action ideas and webinars that connect the global community. With this support, participants are able to reflect on and assess their lifestyles. They make Laudato Si action plans with specific actions aimed at 
achieving multiple Laudatosi goals, and they carry out those plans. Considering we have 1.3 million billion Catholics worldwide, we still have a long way to go, but that's where the economy of Francesco comes in. One of our key Laudatosi goals is the development of ecological economics, which includes starting new businesses and projects that are supporting a more just and sustainable economy. And our hope is to greatly expand our economic sector on the platform by welcoming participants of the, of the EOF to sign on at uh, www.laudatosiactionplatform.org and become active members of our working groups, inspiring others with your actions and ideas, just like you're doing today, and contributing to, contributing to this global communication network of integral ecology. So some of you all have already joined us and we thank you for that. Imagine if more of you joined, how much salt and leaven you would add to the rest of our platform. So our vision is like today, harvesting hope for a transformed world. Please join us, Economy of Francesco. We need you and thank you. <laughs> right. Thank, Thank you, you, John. What a what a nice call. We'll for sure we'll we'll join more and more. Eh? We'll take part, and uh, please be aware that we are with you in in this adventure, of course. Now, you know, two days ago, last October the fourth, Saint Francis, the Apostolic Exhortation Laudate Deum was published to complement the the 2015 encyclical Laudato Si. So we can talk a little bit with Alonso about that. Hola, Alonso. <laughs> yeah. Hola. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here with all of you today and having the opportunity to spread the message of uh, Laudato Si. So in the light of Pope Francis' exhortation, Laudate Deum, we stand at a pivotal moment where faith meets responsibility. This document calls us to recognize our role in the climate crisis, denounce injustice, and shift our cultural paradigm. It is a call for global action on climate change and the protection of our shared common home. It goes beyond environmental concerns, highlighting the urgent needs to address this as a global social issue, deeply tied to the dignity of human life. His Holiness vision of humanity's integral connection with nature resonates widely uniting faith communities and underscoring our collective responsibility. This exhortation prompts us to reflect on the consequences of irresponsible development and the importance of the cultural and spiritual transformation. We must embrace renewable energy, challenge the fossil fuel industry, reshape the economy, and demand meaningful global action. Our faith urges us to cooperate build a future where God's gifts are shared by all. So let us join initiatives like the Laudato Si movement, watch the letter film with your friends and with your family, even uh, host a screening, enroll at the Laudato Si action platform and put our faith into action. And by doing so, we honor our creator and care for his creation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you both of you. And we end this first session of EOF News with another connection, this time with some Portuguese young people who did an EOF event during the World Youth Day this summer in collaboration with the Universidade Católica de Lisboa. And let's, let's talk to him. Olá, Carlos. Me escutas? Ah, que bom. Como está? Tudo bem? Tudo bem. Tudo bom? Welcome back. <laughs> Muito obrigado, muito obrigado em nome de toda a comunidade da EOF. Thank you so much in the name of the whole communities of EOF. We know you would have a lot to tell us. We know in one minute we would like you have a lot to tell us. Was participating in the World Youth Day one small step for you and one giant leap for EOF. Okay, so first of all, good afternoon everyone from Lisbon. We are at the Catholic University of Portugal, so the very same place where last August we had the home for the economy of Francesco during the World Youth Day. The EOF home was a space to showcase many innovative projects that show that a more human, inclusive and sustainable economy is not an utopia because we are already building it. We had several workshops and talks on topics like integral ecology, common good and fraternity, 
It was also a place to reconnect with our EOF friends and to strengthen ties with them. An opportunity to share with people from all over the, the world what is the vocation and the fact of the economy of Francesco. Many young people were touched by the EOF spirit and showed their strong will to be part of the efforts for a better economy for the people and the planet. We tried to build our EOF home in the spirit of the economy of Francesco, open for all, a space of encounters, of dialogue and of listening, a space where we can together look for the answers for the most important questions of our time. For us in Portugal, the economy of Francesco is a transformation process, a community and a new vision for the economy. Each one of us is necessary to care for our common home. To conclude, dear friends, our journey has just started and we should continue as pilgrims, always seeking and risking everything we have, just like Pope Francis told us right here during the World Youth Day. Each one of our small steps is a giant leap for EOF, a giant leap towards an economy of the gospel. So don't forget, one small step for you, one giant leap for EOF. Muito Thank obrigado. you. Thank you so much. We warmly, warmly greet our friends from Portugal. Obrigada, Carlos, but all the others Thank as you. well. Thank you for all you, what, what you have done and for keeping, you know, inspiring others with pilgrims, uh, with this pilgrim spirit. Thank you. C'era una volta un pezzo di legno. Once upon a time, there was a piece of wood. That begins the adventures of Pinocchio. It is a book about freedom, about life as an adventure. Pinocchio learns about life on the road. He is a pilgrim, he is a walker. On the road, he has extraordinary experiences where he learns the craft of living. And there, he eventually becomes odd. Pinocchio is a wonderful and tenacious him, the freedom of boys and young people. We in order to not become puppets, must run, leave home, be trained expectations of parents and adults, because a boy to become adult must disappoint the adults in his life, even if they love them very much. Pinocchio eh, represents a continuous struggle between the boy and the puppets. Ragazzi, a casa, Does not say to buone. his readers, hey, no. go home, be good. Dice il no. He rather say to the opposite, possibile. stay boys resistente, and girls as adulti, long as you can. Stay young inducibile, and resist and escape from the adults who want to deny your irreducible freedom. Ti sveglie c'è un mondo intero intorno a te, ti hanno iscritto a un gioco grande, se non comprendi e se fai domande chi ti risponde chi dice è presto quando sarai grande allora saprai tutto saprai perché saprai perché Quando sarai grande saprai perché devi stare zitto solo ascoltare devi leggere 
più libri che puoi. Solo studiare, studiare, studiare. Quando sarai grande allora capirai. Quando sarai grande saprai. Pinocchio è anche un ragazzo solo. I suoi amici sono Pinocchio animali e sono stupendi. È anche un ragazzo solo. I suoi amici sono animali e sono stupendi. 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 Instead, Pinocchio talks with blackbirds and fireflies, mountains and cats, crickets and fishes. Perché i bambini e i ragazzi sono capaci di dialogare con gli insetti, uccelli, gli alberi. È come se nel fagotto con cui arrivano sulla terra ci fossero anche uno sguardo e un udito diversi, più profondi per vedere cose e comprendere Look linguaggi and che poi hearing. svaniscono una volta diventi grandi. Ma Pinocchio è anche un cooperatore degli animali. Viene trasportato in volo da un colombo salvato nel mare da un tonno e impara la forma di un pigeon rescued by sea by a tuna. There are some good rescues from a dog received a little girl. The dog had been rescued by when he was in danger of drowning and a little reveals a terrible secret to him. The golden law of reciprocity. In this world, what is done is rendered. And so, when it is Pinocchio who is in danger of being fried to death in the frying pan of the green fisherman, it will be the dog Alidoro himself who saves him from the boiling hole, who puts repressity into practice. It takes more than one village to raise a child. It takes the whole universe with all its many creators. Pinocchio is a tremendously lonely boy, even in the deathive moments of his history, including his hanging. Oh, my father, if you were here, But his father was not. So that it reminds us that children are much more alone than adults generally believe. In Collodi's world, there were children and adults. No middle ground. Pinocchio is no longer a child, but not yet an adult. Pinocchio invented adolescence, which is the age of running away and running wild when one returns home happy, but only to live again immediately and ever happier. He is a prodigal son who lives and does not return, or when he does return, he lives again in search of his freedom. Pinocchio is always running. Pinocchio. And to us, and to him, we say, Pinocchio, go, continue your free run. In un mondo che non ci vuole più, il mio canto libero sei tu. E l'immensità si apre intorno a noi, al di là del limite degli occhi tuoi. Nuove sensazioni, giovani emozioni, si esprimono purissime in noi. La veste dei fantasmi del passato, cadendo lascia il quadro immacolato e salza un vento tiepido d'amore, di vero amore. Pinocchio è un ragazzo povero e ha sempre fame. Pinocchio è un povero boy. Raramente lo trova. Is... Che mestiere fa? Is hungry. Padre. Gli chiese mangia fuoco. 
Il povero, gli rispose Pinocchio. Which is the job of your dad? He's hungry. Era povero. Geppetto is working, but he's a poor man. Working does not remove him from poverty and hungry. It is not just enough. Working to not be poor. Pinocchio then has a very bad relation with money which is at the origin of the unfortunate pages of his story. All his troubles begin with money. He sells his spelling book for four pennies. And thanks to this money, Pinocchio enters the manager of Walker's puppet theater. The latter gives him more money, five gold ticks. And thanks to this money, Pinocchio will meet the cat and the fox. We do not work for vile interest, we told him. We work to reach others. And Pinocchio replied to the cat, if all cats look like you, lucky mice. There is nothing more serious than manipulating the language of gift to deceive. A boy, a girl, a young man, the cats and foxes know that young people live within the register of gift, which is the mother tongue. So they use words of death, disguised as a words of gift, but just to deceive and kill them. If you want to deceive a young person, use the language of gift. You will almost always succeed. Quanta fretta, ma dove corri, dove vai? Se ci ascolti per un momento capirai. Lui è il gatto ed io la volpe, siamo in società. Di noi ti puoi fidare. Non vedi che è un vero affare, non perdere l'occasione, se no poi te ne pentirai. Non capita tutti i giorni di avere due consulenti, due impresari che si fanno in quattro per te. Ehi, avanti, non perdere tempo, ferma qua. È un normale contratto, è una formalità. Tu ci cedi tutti i diritti, noi faremo di te un divo da hit parade. Pinocchio poi non lavora, non vuole lavorare. Pinocchio then does not work, does not want to work. After trying in vain to swim to his dad Geppetto in the middle of the sea, Pinocchio swims to the highlands of the industrious bees, where everyone is always working. In the land of toys, there is no school, only toys. In the land of the industrious bees, there is no free time, only work to differently wrong words. On that island, Pinocchio is hungry and he tries to get food. There were only two ways left for him to eat, to ask for some, to work, or to beg for a penny or a bolso of bread. But he was ashamed to beg because Geppetto had told him that only the old and sick people have the right to beg. He met a first worker. Pinocchio approached him and said in a whisper, Would you do me the kindness of giving me a penny? For I am starving. I will give you four pence, replied the man, provided you help me pull these two cars of coal home. Outrage, Pinocchio replied, By your rule, I have never been an ass, a donkey. Pinocchio asks for charity, a gift, and the man offers him a job. Pinocchio does not accept. Then he meets a mason. Come with me to bring lime, and instead of one penny, I will give you five. Here the money becomes five pennies, but Pinocchio does not accept contracts from men and prefers to beg. Pinocchio prefers begging over work, prefers shame over a job. Pinocchio, at the end of his stay on the horizon, will end up doing a job. 
donna. When a woman finally came by, Pinocchio, Pinocchio asked her for a glass of water and the woman replied, drink up, my boy. The dialogue with this woman begins with a gift. A woman who later turns out to be his god fairy does not ask Pinocchio to earn the water. She gives it to me him. Young people are entitled to water and bread because they are young children of their parents and children of everyone of older. After drinking water, Pinocchio will work, helping the fairy woman carrying her jugs of water home and receive a reward, food. The woman overcame the exchange of equivalents. Young people learn reciprocity. First, they experience receiving and gift. Good contracts come from gratuitous. Adults' work is learned through a gift as a kids because gratuitous is the mother of all contracting and work. Thank you, Pinocchio, for reminding us this for the last 150 years. We almost always forget it. And you Continue to nash. Ormai mi conoscete. Sono un ragazzo prima ero un burattino, ma sono anche Abramo che lasciò la sua terra. Sono Abramo, who left his land. I am Jesus, divine migrant from the Trinity. E sono uno di voi. Un giorno ho iniziato a cantare. Poi a correre non mi sono fermato più. Correte, correte insieme a me. Prima o poi la terra promessa la raggiungeremo finalmente insieme. Felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. Pressure to break or retreat at every turn. Facing the fear that the truth I just go. No telling how all this will work out, but I've come too far to go back now. I am looking for free. And to find it cost me everything I have. I am looking for freedom, looking for freedom. And to find it cost me everything I have. Hello everyone, it's Carlo and Luca here at the console. We are very happy to welcome you to this moment together. Now we are going to take you to another room in the wonderful home of the economy of Francesco. To do this, we ask you to close your eyes and focus just for a moment on the voice you are hearing. What does this voice tell us? It tells us a story, one that begins a long time ago. A story that narrates, sues, weaves, and embraces. It's our very own story of stories, the story of the economy of Francesco throughout this year. And like uh, all respectable stories, this one also begins with a small daydream, the dream of being able to reach anyone going through a period of hardship and pain, through a narrative and with all the affection possible. Especially this year, we wanted to take our stories to the squares to remind the world and ourselves of what our sisters in Iran and Afghanistan are going through. A few days ago, it was the turn of Amita, who was beaten by Iranian moral police and put in a coma because she did not wear her headscarf properly. 
our deepest thoughts and prayers go out to her. But now Diana is connected with us from Portugal. Diana, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Throughout 2023, the economy of Francesco promoted several initiatives in support, especially of Afghan and Iranian women whose rights at this very moment are denied and suffocated by violence. In Italy, as in Germany, Portugal, Norway, Chile, Brazil, and many other parts of the world, we used the narrative expedient of a thousand and one nights to remind us that storytelling, which is telling a story, is also a place where we can go to try to defeat death, a sign to celebrate and defend the value of words and their generative capacity for salvation, the fundamental right to express oneself, to protest, to defend and fight for life, rights and freedom. Why? The economy of Francesco was doing what the people to whom the event were dedicated have requested. Let our voices be heard. Don't forget us. Today, possiamo ascoltare le nostre voci, non dimentichiamocene. Hence, Ricordiamo quindi che non possiamo ignorare che la protesta può trasformare e definire anche quelli che fanno le proteste. Uno dei pilastri dell'economia di Francesco è che gli esseri umani sono molto di più che sono persone che sono interessate o che hanno i propri interessi e portano le persone a veramente preoccuparsi gli uni per gli altri, quelli più vicini e quelli più lontani senza aspettarsi nulla a cambio. È anche molto significativo il fatto che molte persone che partecipano alle nostre iniziative sono giovani. Grazie a short testimony from some of these young people from the Agrupamento de Escolas de Bolsada in Portugal. Um abraço a todos. Fico muito feliz por participar numa atividade com milhões de jovens. I'm very happy to participate in an activity with millions of youngs. I'm happy to participate in this activity. For me, it was important to participate because I could speak more about the women in Iran and Afghanistan. And with, uh, from the approach of elderly people. UF, as we know, is a story that speaks to the heart. And Diana proved it to us. But it's also a story of mind and hands, as the Pope reminded us in Assisi last year. And this year has been no different. In our activities, we have always tried to allocate an important place for education, for everyone, always, everywhere. It's the story of the economy of Francesco School. This year, the economy of Francesco School had a unique form from the very beginning. It started with a special connection from a place dear to and for EOF, the Bollate Prison. Follow us. So unfortunately, because of some mistakes I have done in my life, as uh, you see, we are in prison. So, well, I'm sorry about that. You are in jail, but you are not in jail when you are working, because this is a real uh, job. You are paying for what you did uh, wrong outside, but here you have the opportunity to rebuild your life. Connected with us is Giorgia Nigri, coordinator of DOF School. Giorgia, please. Hi, 
Hi, thank you, Consol. And yes, we are not our mistakes. So what is the UF School? The UF School is an annual, free, as we were saying, participatory training program that spotlights emerging economists, entrepreneur, and change makers from our extended community. Its fundamental aim lies in the advancement of the ideas and actions of our young students and individuals engaged in the various domains of science and economic practice. As mentioned, we space from problems in jail to armaments, to indigenous teachings, to financial education, to inequality. The current iteration, because as you mentioned, we are at our third edition right now, builds on the principles that we built up in our 2022 event. So they are taken every month to they're underpinned by theory and practice, and they serve as a communal face framework to actually discuss all the problems that we have in our economic issues today. So it is once a month, every last Monday of the month, 12 lessons. So they're not just words, there's a real deal. So please join us and buckle up because this is real information from our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Georgia. Training for EOF never takes a vacation. Well, uh, or rather, it goes on vacation, but always brings us in its heart. And this summer, the heart of EOF was in La Verna, where 75 young ladies and men from 28 countries around the world decided to invest their best self in the summer school. Without with us is Matteo Rizzoli to tell us about this experience, Matteo. Oh, thank you. Um, actually, it's not going to be me, but rather Juan Carlos Mondragon, which was one of the participants in the OF Summer School, who is going to uh, talk to you about the event. He sent us this message, and I'm going to read this uh, to you. He says, the theme of spiritual, social, and narrative capitals has resonated with me deeply, and the serene settings of La Verna Franciscan Sanctuary has provided the perfect backdrop for our exploration. Over the past month, the knowledge and insights gained from the lectures, the engaging discussions, and the shared experiences have continued to inspire and shape my thinking. The significance of spiritual capital as the foundation of purpose and joy in our lives has become even more apparent to me. In a world rapidly advancing with technology, the preservation and cultivation of this capital is vital to, to combat feelings of emptiness and ensure a sustainable future. The power of narrative capital which shapes our identities and influences how we interact with others, has encouraged me to be more mindful of the stories I tell and the narratives I engage with. The journey of San Francis of Assisi and his experience at La Verna have been a profound reminder of the transformative power of embracing simplicity, humility, and the joy of giving. It has encouraged me to contemplate my vocation and embrace the path of intentional relationship and communion. As I reflect on this past month, I'm filled with a renewed commitment to promote spiritual, social, and narrative capitals in my research, work, and personal life. Thank you so much, uh, Matteo. Last but not least, the story of UF is indeed this present voice, but it's also embedded in the words that have been written and that we would like ideally to deliver to the young people of the future, the ones that make up the libraries of the present. The first challenge of narrating the economy of Francesco was taken up by the Avenire newspaper, which from the very beginning, and thanks to its journalists, has been able to meet dozens of young EOF protagonists and recount their experiences. These stories are now available in a book published by Vita Pensiero, EOF, The Tale of the Protagonist for a New Economy. You see, Luca, even us can be influencers, and I also have a book I'd like to promote today. 
Well, uh, like a compass in the vast ocean of the modern economy, the economy of Francesco, uh, a glossary for repairing the language of economics, emerges as a crucial publication this year. Edited by Stefano Rozzoni and Plinio Limata, published by Città Nuova, and a more recent Portuguese version edited by the publishing house of the Portuguese Catholic University. Wow, it's a hard job, the influencer, huh? Written by 33 young scholars from various corners of the world, this volume invites us to look at the economy through a different, more ethical and inclusive lens. Here with us is Gloria, a researcher from the EOF Academy that makes me become proud of being an influencer today, whom we asked to read a few lines from her contribution on the word entrepreneurship. Thank you, Gloria. The entrepreneurs of Economia Francesco are moved by an intentional purpose of fighting injustice and inequalities. They will create businesses that meet the needs of the community where they are inserted. Using Pope Francis' words, an entrepreneur is to be considered someone who has a vocation to create wealth to respond to the needs of the most vulnerable, to the needs of the society and the needs of the planet. With his creative abilities, he innovates with responsibility and sustainability by creating products and services and giving work to those who need it in order to contribute to the common good. Thank you, Gloria, for sharing your work on, uh, on the concept of uh, entrepreneurship. And speaking of ethics and inclusion, we cannot fail to mention the attention that EOF dedicates to agriculture. Let's imagine an economy that starts from the land, that sees agriculture not as an individualistic act, but as a genuine collective action. This is the message that Alessandra Smerilli and a group of young people from the Agriculture and Justice Village convey to us in the book Il Nostro Pane Quotidiano per un'economia solidale e sostenibile, Our Daily Bread for a Solidary and Sustainable Economy, published by San Paolo Editions. By the way, Sister Alessandra is the General Secretary of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, and she's a close associate of Pope Francis. She's here at the Severafico Institute with us. So I'm very happy to welcome you and to give you the floor. Thank you. Hello to everyone. And I'm very happy to be here with you all. I'm happy to see that the spirit of EOF is more alive than ever and able to create powerful synergies and maintain strong partnership over the years in, in our global society. The Pope is certainly with you, and me and all the dicastery too. I am beyond happy and grateful to have the chance to assist and also to celebrate with you. This event occurs in an indeed special and historical week. Just two days ago, the Synod started, and the letter from the Pope Laudate, Laudate Deum was released. These two events mark a historical moment for the church, open to the Holy Spirit and to risk with the Lord, as Pope Francis put it. And so this gathering is just as remarkable. As the Laudate Deum says, we must move beyond the mentality of appearing to be concerned, but not having the courage needed to produce substantial changes. I think these words are a call for you. Please have the courage to change the economy. Renewed by this message, let's move forward with joy, persistence, and fervor to continue your transformative work for the economy of today and the harvest of the economy of tomorrow. Thank you, and all the best. 
Well, thank you for these inspiring words, Sister Alessandra. And it's always a, a different kind of economy, one that dreams with its feet firmly plant, planted on the ground, the one that appears in the book Rethinking Economics, Starting from the Commons, written hand in hand by many juniors and senior authors together, and published by Springer Nature. We don't have enough time today to delve deeply into the contents of the volume, but we know it's already becoming a reference point and a source of reflection for many around the world. Keep up the great work, folks. Dear friends, thank you for listening to our stories. Thank you for being here with us today. Our time together has now come to an end, but we cannot leave you without reminding you that what makes a story special is not the beginning or the conclusions, but the arising desire to seek out new stories once again. EOF uh, is not just an economic model, but a narrative, a story of lives, hopes, and dreams. It represents a bridge between the past and the present, between traditions and innovations, between the local and the global, between different generations. This year, we have traveled through various stories. The invitation is clear. Continue to look, reflect, and act. Act and act again. Always guided by ethics, inclusion, and the common good. So once again, thank you all so much for sharing this moment with us. Stay tuned to EOF On Air because they are back. Niado with Don't Give Up, Peter Gabriel and Kate Bush cover by Rocky Fox. Thank you. In this proud land we grew up strong Here at our web radio console, Enrique and Francesca. Um, let's thank, first of all, let's thank uh, Luca, Carlo, Giorgia, Matteo, and Diana for bringing us back to the first pages of our wiki EOF. And thank you to Emanuela Pantano and Valentino Borgo who have walked us through the incredible and untold story of Pinocchio. And we are receiving so many stories and words and messages. So let's read uh, the words of those who are writing to us. Uh, what do you say, Francesca? Yeah, we, what got, do you say? we got quite several nice messages, so we thank you all. But uh, in particular, we can have a read of some. For example, yeah. Let's yeah, see I'll this show one you. here, like, uh, for, for example, from Si Shun Lam. He says, great to see a, uh, great to see a greeting from Kate Raworth. 
Uh, we applied donut, donut economics in the West Midlands Inclusive Growth Framework. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, we have also Michel Lamou, who says, the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor is one of the same cry. It's one and the same cry. For me, this is true, and my research project is uh, in waste management in sub-Saharan countries. That's very, very interesting. Uh, from Gabriela Consolaro, amazing experiences. So happy to see many people working for justice in agriculture. This is so all interesting. Together. We thank you all, and we wait for we are waiting for more messages from you. And now let's listen from uh, another message, this time in video, from other ambassadors of EOF. Dear young people, it's great to be able to welcome you to this meeting, this milestone in the history of the economy of Francesco. And I hope that you can feel the embrace of all the other people who are here at this meeting. And if you're watching it with other people, let me invite you to actually embrace each other and feel that community that we have. I think this embrace has two main dimensions. The first one is the dimension of solidarity. And solidarity is so important in the world today because it can really confront injustice and bring it down as the Polish people showed us when they confronted an unjust system with the help, the inspiration of Pope John Paul II and brought it down. But alongside that, we need the new ideas that are going to build the new economy. And those ideas are going to come from the local level. And that's why we need subsidiarity as the other big dimension of our movement. So with these words, I wish you all the best for this meeting and into the future. Voglio fare voglio rivolgere a voi tutti, care ragazze e care ragazzi, che Dear young people, greetings. As you are beginning this new path on this new journey on the economy of Francis, in the midst of serious and dramatic situations, this is a way towards change in order to meet the needs of a new economy, an economy that can be able to face the great challenges of our humanity in this specific historical time for our world. And I believe that your voice is going to be important individually, but also as a community while working for formation. Both this and your reflections, I believe, will promote the new ideas that will be very helpful for all of us. Thank you for all your work. Thank you, Sister Helen Alford and, and Carlo Petrini and the whole slow food world. But yes, knowledge is actually one of the most important common goods, as we, we've seen before, and uh, we are also we are always highlighting. But actually, not yet, not always, and not everywhere, as today knowledge seems to be becoming more and more expensive and restricted to a few people only. So EOF is also committed to promoting free and universal education. It proposes the opportunity to study for free as a fundamental right of young people, especially for those without means, up to the highest levels. Yeah, and the next session of the program was prepared by the EOF Academy by speaking on, on education, by uh, the International Young Scholars Network that was born to help young people who are committed to an academic career to attain required scientific background. Yeah, exactly. And these scholars are the ones who, together with the academy coordinators, took care of the content of the next two interesting talks. The first contribution is an interview with Daron Acemoglu, an institute professor of economics at MIT, Boston, and one of the leading economists worldwide. Yeah, it's important to say that we are delighted that yeah. Professor Achemoglu accepted our invitation. And uh, on behalf of the whole EOF community, we want to express our gratitude to him. Uh, we remind you that the full interview is, avail is available on the website of EOF starting today. And as we have, uh, we have, we have had to cut some parts due to time restraints on this on-air program. So please go there and listen to the full interview afterwards, okay? So let's go in, in, uh, in the discussion because for the economy of Francesco community it's particularly interesting to meet Professor Acemoglu because in part, I would say large part of his academic words, he focuses on a topic that in the economy of Francesco we 
mentioned, but also a bit overlooked, uh, and I'm speaking about technology. And more precisely, Professor Acemoglu, if I may say so, he tries to understand the relation between the technology and also another topic important for the economy of Francesco, that is inequality. And in fact, his latest publication with Simon Johnson that I have here is a very big book that I read in the last weeks. <laughs> Uh, power and progress uh, is uh, exactly on this relationship between uh, technology and inequality. So as an opening question, uh, Professor Acemoglu, I mean, reading your book, I had the impression that you and uh, Simon Johnson are basically in uh, the middle of two extremes. So on the one hand, uh, let's say the Jean-Jacques Rousseau position, right? The idea that in the second discourse of inequality, Rousseau said when uh, innovation and uh, metallurgy and agricultural practice were introduced, there is where started inequalities. On the other extreme of the spectrum, there is the techno-optimistic view, right? This idea that, uh, in the, especially as you show in the cons of worker relation, technology increased productivity and also the idea of the bandwagon. So this uh, raising salary and uh, improving situation for all. So my first question is, where do you situate yourself? In yeah, I think if you spectrum? put the spectrum like that, Paolo, I, you very much firmly sit in the middle. But I think there is also a somewhat different perspective that I think uh, my work tries to bring. And, and actually, I think it's actually sort of well captured by, since you just showed the book, uh, by the beginning quotes <laughs> that we have from H.G. Wells in the in the beginning of the book, in the beginning of chapter one, when he says, you know, uh, we've, we've thought about technology or we've thought about developing science and knowledge as a way of humans controlling, or men, he says at the time, controlling or control over nature, but it's often about control of men over men. So I think that is the mm -hmm. key aspect that Simon and I want to bring, and that's why we are in the middle, which is that technology is not neutral. It's not neutral towards distribution inequality, but it's also not neutral towards power, politics, who controls information. And all of these are very tightly entangled with whether we as a society benefit from technology and what type of society we create out of that technology. So. Yes, I have long ago abandoned the techno-optimistic perspective that somehow new technologies are going to create very powerful forces towards better society. And that if there are uh, stumbling blocks on the way, we'll find other technologies or we'll adapt our institutions to solve them. Now, there's some truth to that adaptation indeed that has happened during certain periods in time. You know we come up with pharmaceuticals and they have side effects and we come up with other pharmaceuticals to deal with those side effects. But I think that analogy both shows the limitations of using technology to deal with technology's problems. And also it works in pharmaceuticals because to some degree, because it's a very narrow domain, it doesn't work when the technology that you create completely changes society, completely changes the power dynamics within society. So I think those are issues that to us are central and they have not been completely uh, incorporated into the economic thinking. And part of the reason is because again, political economy is a relatively new field, but also partly because economics has its own version of techno-optimism. The productivity bandwagon is what we called it with Simon, which is that somehow there are powerful enough forces that when productivity increase, that's going to get translated to wages. And if it gets translated to wages, of course, that's a very important step towards shared prosperity. And again, we try to argue theoretically and empirically why that's not completely warranted. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much. And connected to what you said before, uh, let's try to go a little bit more in depth on your argumentation. Uh, in, in, in your book, in the book that Paul, Paolo showed before, or mentioned before, you mentioned that technology is a matter of choice. So in the economic context, you say that there are technologies that somehow are friends or, or of human labor, so they create or improve workers' progress productivity or create new tasks and new jobs. 
and others instead which are for instance related to automation and uh, uh, that, that basically will destroy traditional jobs and will diminish the quality uh, of work environment and indeed there are several papers showing also uh, also these also in other in other domain like uh, also human fertility and so on and so forth so if technology is a matter of choice then the, the question will will be who's called to choose one rather than the others and who is choosing the direction that technology research is taking? Well, I think that's an excellent question, Valentina. And, and I think the, the, it's a two-layer answer in some sense. Directly, it's almost always in history and today, it is a group of powerful actors. Sometimes it was the U.S. government that had a very important input into it, sometimes some leading scientists, but often it's uh, a set of entrepreneurs and uh, and companies that have a very powerful effect on the direction of technology. For instance, if you want to understand why it is that the early stages of the British Industrial Revolution, starting in the middle of the 18th century, were so focused on developing, you know, a factory system centered on control, monitoring, very harsh working conditions. Those are organizational and technological choices. Those were the choices that were made by a group of entrepreneurs and business people. But it's also not sufficient to say that it's their choices because they are embedded in society. Society indirectly has the ability to control those choices. And the reason why our book, at least as Simon and I view it, is a commentary on the current state of affairs, especially in the United States, but more broadly, is because we think that the current direction of technology has veered, of course, in terms of bringing potential benefits to humanity, partly because society at large, U.S. society especially, has abrogated its responsibility via countervailing powers, regulation, government action of keeping the very powerful actors in check to some degree. You, Professor Acemoglu, in front of this uh, community of researchers, entrepreneurs, and change makers, but especially for the researchers, uh, what they, um, what would be your advice, you know, for these researchers who aim to reshape economics? I mean, where should they put their best energy? I mean, which topics, issues, problems do they need to address? What is well, urgent? that's another fantastic question. Let me mention four things that you know. I'm I'm an economist, and 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 I think economics has problems, but has great strengths as well. So I don't think like okay. some people outside of economics who criticize economics, I don't think that our discipline should be thrown into the uh, rubbish bin. But there are blind spots exactly like you say. And let me mention four that uh, from going from, uh, you know, more concrete to more abstract. So the first one is what we've talked about technology. I think we need to be much richer in our thinking about technology, what we want from technology, how we shape technology and how technology affects not just, the, you know, for economists, the main thing technology does is affects the production possibilities set of a society, it, but it does many more things than that and how it affects the te production possibilities frontier, how we use technology. I think that's a very, very important thing. The second thing, you know, uh, economics uh, developed as a materialist science and and, and generally, you know, uh, even though it's a very different type of materialist science, it, it sort of uh, has some parallels with, with other sort of materialist conceptions. You know, most of our explanations, sometimes for good, start with, you know, what are the incentives? What are the firm's profits? What are the f uh, consumption possibilities? And is this profit maximizes? Is this for you good for you? And one of the things that, you know, Simon and I did in the book is really push for this idea that when you're thinking about the direction of technology, this is not enough. You really need to also think of a vision of technology. Like where do the values of the people who push for uh, new technologies come from? It's not always just their interests. It's a set of notions, set of norms. And we have to, I think, understand these and and also perhaps also be part of a conversation about, you know, how we can improve the values and pre preoccupations of, uh, of these entrepreneurs and all these technology leaders, as well as other agents in the economy. How, 
different would the world be if, for example, the people who, you know, spearheaded the social media revolution weren't obsessed about getting digital revenues and reaching the biggest market size in three years, but actually really worried about creating an environment for better conversations as people in the beginning of the 2000s had imagined that, you know, the internet and social media could be a democratizing tool. So, you know, why did they not have those values and could they have had them or is the profit motive always going to be the only dominant one for these things? I think that's that's part of uh, part of the conversation. I think uh, a third one uh, is is about community and, and, and economics, meaning, you know, you know, economic relations are often embedded in broader social relations, you know, how people cooperate in non-economic domains. There is some very interesting work in economics going back over the last 20 years, for example, interplay of market and non-market institutions. But I think uh, as we are witnessing bigger social changes, there is more need for bringing those things more into the mainstream of, you know, what are the economic arrangements that can also encourage more social co societal cooperation. And I think, you know, this is intimately linked to questions of inequality, because often inequality is something that's influenced not just by economic decisions, but these broader so social cooperation, who is your community, how you cooperate or fail to cooperate within the community, uh, and, 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 and so on. And then the final one, I think, uh, you know, in the age of AI, this is more philosophical, perhaps, but I think it has, uh, has has relevance for uh, for economics, and perhaps it has relevance for the economics of Francesco, uh, which which is you know what is the value of human agency? You know, is it desirable if we you know have machines that are very good and make a lot of decisions for humans? Is that the kind of world we want to live in, or? Or is there some notion of, you know, humans making decisions that is different from, you know, machines being in charge in terms of the production process, in terms of, you know, what we choose, how we live, and so on and so forth. So I think a broader conception of what is the right framework for us to think about human tool interaction or human machine interaction. And I think the, the way that economists would do is we would uh, posit a utility function that's over consumption for humans, and we would posit a uh, social welfare function that is about consumption of everybody for uh, for the social planner. So in that agency doesn't matter if you get that consumption, if you make the right choices because a machine or an algorithm tells you to do that, that's as good. But I think that misses something. It both misses something about the creative process. It misses something probably about what would make humans more satisfied with their lives and with the economy. So I think this is sort of semi-philosophical, semi-economic set of issues that we need to explore more in, 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 in this age of very rapid technological changes. Thank you so much, Professor Acimoglu, but also Paolo Santori and Valentina Rotondi for this inspiring dialogue. Well, and now we'll let the floor to a couple of EOF Academy fellows, Tatiana and Karen, connected from Brazil and India, and we also greet a lot uh, Barbara, who she couldn't actually connect anymore. But the other two will guide us through a short reflection of Blind Spot on Economics. Yeah, hello. Hi, Karen. Can Hi, you Karen. hear us? Hi, yes, welcome. Thank you, you loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you, right. Francesca. Well, we're pleased um, to listen to you. Thank you. Uh, so today, we at, at the Economy of Francesco Academy will try to give you the Academy's collective answers to the last questions that were pro posed to Professor Archivoglu. What are the blind spots of the knowledge surrounding economic issues? What are the topics, groups, and methodologies excluded or marginalized? And what are we as the EOF Academy doing to start an active and generative change. So today we present you with three insights. Imagine them as pillars on which the vision and activity of the EOF Academy is based. So let me start with the first blind spot, as it were. In 2023, it is not new or particularly original to criticize the homo economicus, that is, 
the assumption that human beings are perfectly rational, fully informed, profit-maximizing individuals. And yet, this caricature of man still defines what is mainstream or worth inquiring in economics, when in fact, we might pity the homo economicus. The reality is that the homo economicus wants to be recognized as a person, a person living in a community with desires that can transcend his egocentricity. This person has emotional and spiritual demands for meaning, beauty, truth, and justice. The economic person also knows that he, she, is not the only subject of economics. Communities, families, animals, plants, the earth, all of these actors need to populate our economic inquiry. These are not just footnotes. They should be active subjects and not passive objects of our research and inquiry. In our work as EOF Academy researchers, the homo economicus is not the rule, if anything. He is rather the exception. Uh, as Pope Francis invites us to go to the periphery of our societies to help the most disadvantaged by the current economic system, so we need to do with research and knowledge in economics and allied areas. We try to go to the peripheries of economics and bring to the center what has been discarded for no good reason. But let's move to the second blind spot. Yeah, thank you. And now, yeah, we can switch, switch to Tatiana, right? Right, precisely. Hola, Tatiana, como esta? Tudo bem? Hi, hello, everyone. Hello. So the second blind spot is, um, so first I will introduce myself. Hi, my name is Tatiana, and I am also a member of the UF Academy, uh, connect, connected to the division between orthodoxy and heterodoxy center the periphery center and the periphery. We think that the most part economics today is conducted in a bubble. This is true in three senses. First, there is an ideological bubble built around the homo economics. Some topics, some agents, some methodologies are excluded or marginalized simple because they are difficult to quantify and they escape to the iron cage of mainstream economics methodology. This creates a second bubble. Even when it pushes the discipline toward more comprehensive views, much of the economic research has become a dialogue between experts with a little or no impact on reality. The third bubble is that of uh, hyper-specialization. We refute the, the idea that, the, that just uh, econo economists, economists are entitled to do economic, economics, while we, re we recognize that some degree of specialization is necessary. We do believe that economists should not uh, should be in dialogue with other dis disciplines. This is why the EOF Academy, in the EOF Academy, we have experts in organization studies, philosophers, sociologists, urbanists, biologists, and many other figures. The EOF Academy is plural, is the diverse. As EOF Academy researchers, we do not aim to find a perfect economic theory to replace economics. We do even think that some parts of economics should be kept. However, we are interested in blowing up the bubbles through research focusing on create problems and manifested injustice. We see our role as economists, not separated from our role as citizens and human beings. Our knowledge should serve our community from the family up, from the family up to the international and global one. Thank you. Thank you so much, 
Thank you so much, Tatiana, Karen, and uh, to all of you, and we wish all the best to the EOF Academy and its works. Um, we are always here, right, in EOF on air in our 25th hour, but I see that Maria has joined us in this meantime, and I think it's a good time for the second face-to-face -face with Francis. For the global event with Pope Francis in Assisi last year, a key theme was prophecy. We heard readings from the book of Isaiah, and when Pope Francis spoke to us from stage, he called our attention to the fact that the very life of Francis of Assisi was a prophecy, one that continues into our own times. Now we are here, one year after. We hold firm the faith in a new economy, an economy of Francesco. We are building it day by day. Seeing several of our projects already becoming real is a source of hope and inspiration to many of us. However, looking at the world today can also be disheartening. The global crises are accelerating in the wrong direction. What is the role of prophecy today? Prophecy is a capital good important in any society, and especially when big crises strike. Then prophecy becomes a primary necessity, like water and respect. A prophet has the ability to see things as they are, telling the truth, looking ahead. We need prophets to point out a direction, to tell great stories. By articulating visions for the future, a prophetic voice can inspire radical change. In the Bible, prophecy is very much connected with young people being called, like Daniel, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah. Now we are invited to focus on the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah starts his book narrating his vocation. And for Jeremiah, his calling begins with meeting a voice. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you, I, to everyone I send you to, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. When you encounter the voice, you find yourself in a global event. You hear, you see, you may be touched. Jeremiah is a magisterium on an authentic human vocation, a voice calling him to an unknown destiny to which he freely responds. But at first, he hesitates, objecting that he is too young and does not know how to speak. Still, he accepts his vocation. It's a freedom and a destiny. Jeremiah could say no to the call, but he could not escape his own marrow. And us, what is our calling? Do we feel too young? We would have so much more to talk about this great prophet. But to conclude, Jeremiah is a prophet during the time of night, but with a sun within that allows him to see a different dawn than the deluded people would like to see. He proclaims it, sings it, without fear. He tells about it so that also we may not be afraid in our nights, here and now. As the philosopher Andrea Neher has written, Jeremiah, however, crosses midnight. Light is in his book and joy too. But it is in the shallows and the cliffs that one must suddenly see them shine and hear them sing. May each of us, in the shallows or in the cliffs of life, find light and joy always.
Thank you, Maria. What a beautiful wish. Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm not sure the young people of Economy of Francesco feel too young to, to, to really change their world. For sure, they are brave and concrete. So, for example, let's have a look at the last latest message we are having, Kike. Uh, one said, las preguntas que nos hacemos, el hecho de cuestionarnos la forma en que hacemos empresa, utilizamos el dinero, cuidamos la naturaleza, lo que consumimos... The way we take care of the nature and all the questions, everything is precious because it helps us to be in movement, to help look for answers, to explore what is wonderful from other experiences, to get contagious and to contagious any uh, other people uh, be creating from Cuba. This was the last come. We also have a... Another message from uh, our ambassadors, please. So uh, my um, wish is that uh, you will always remain in joy because the, what you are doing goes behind any way of a better expectation. Because what we are doing is a transformation, not a change. Because you know the difference between change and transformation. The change presupposes continuity. Transformation means choosing a new path, a new way. That, by the way, is the recommendation coming to us by, oh, most of the time, by Pope Francis. So many, many wishes stay in joy and don't be afraid. Even though some people might criticize you or might, don't be afraid because you should know that you are operating from the proper side. Many thanks, uh, and I hope, I don't know if such an hope can be accomplished, to see you personally in uh, one occasion or the other. Bye-bye. Ciao. Greetings. I'm Sabine Alkair in the University of Oxford's Poverty and Human Development Initiative, OFI. And I'm really delighted at this meeting of the economy of a Francesco on the 6th of October, because it is so important that we try to bring together our academic work, be it on multidimensional poverty, be it on inequality, on well-being, on digital aspects, some of the most intractable issues that face humanity, that we bring our work, our research together with a passion for service. And that passion can infuse your research, making it of the utmost and highest quality of excellence so that it really opens new intellectual channels but it can also make you a voice to reach out to those who are not researchers, those in positions of power in terms of politics or um, business leaders, community leaders, faith leaders, so that they have the tools they need to do what they really want, which is to serve in a fruitful way. So my thoughts are with you and I hope that your work goes forward with excellence, with a compassion and a commitment to service and to God's glory. Thank you, thank you, Professor Akayer and our dear Zamani. And then, among the many testimonials, you know, we want to listen and thank, especially Francesca Di Maul, who has just joined us. So, president of the Serafico, Seraphic Institute, member of the UF committee, witness of the concrete and daily love that is lived every day in this place, you know, that is hosting us today with the usual generosity and friendship. So please, we are happy once again with your words, Francesca. Thank you, thank you, Francesca. Eh, carissimi, io sono veramente onorata, grata. Dear all, uh, I'm honored to bring you the greetings from the Serafico. We are located right at the Serafico, which is uh, in the heart of fragility, where every day we take care of children and young people with severe disabilities, uh, where every day we try to help our children to live full lives. Each of us uh, from birth uh, has been called to uh, the responsibility of caring for life, all life, and to care for ourselves, for others, and the world. And it's uh, this this is a starting point, and from here I want to make a call for an economy that knows how to be maternal and not uh, a stepmother towards each person and the environment in which we live. A maternal economy is called to nurture life, uh, to cultivate it, to nurture it, uh, to make it flourish. Uh, the economy cannot be a stepmother, excluding creating inequalities, uh, responding to individual interests, uh, looking only to profit. Uh, a, mater a maternal economy 
economy which will care for life and all life despite limitations and fragilities, we will be able to ensure development for all. Go to the roots of the problems and the causes of human suffering to find efficient and concrete solutions. A maternal economy needs to cultivate thinking, from starting from the covenant uh, that Pope Francis signed with you last year in Assisi. A maternal economy needs eyes that can see the wounds of humankind and of the earth, and it needs a fraternity that sees us responsible for one another. Try, try to reweave all the dimensions you will deal with and thread with care and always ask yourselves if the paths you intend to take are truly nourishment for life. Cultivate life, cultivate economy. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Francesca. You let us reflect on really, really big things and big issues. So thank you once again. The best for your work, the best for all your work here, the Seraphic and the hug at all the people hosted here, but also to the many operators that who spent every day, you know, uh, their time with with these people. So thank you very much. And now let's just turn the page and listen to another bit of music by our Valentino before a new harvest session. Sai da minha frente que eu quero passar Que este samba é tão animal E você não vai querer que eu chegue ao final Este samba que é misto de maracatu É o samba de preto velho, samba de preto todo So, uh, with the notes of this music in mind, we continue with our journey. Mm -hmm. Academic and training initiatives. This yes. is now the, 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 the part, the, the, the initiatives that we will see are in this field. And so, we have seen them growing in different parts of the world during our harvest. And this is why we start this section about academic and training initiatives, indeed, with Mateus from Brazil. Hi, I'm Matheus Machado, and the book How to Manage the Resources that God Entrusts in Your Hands is inspired by EOF, where it was born. In the preface, you can see faith in a God who is the creator of all things visible and invisible. Despise invisible things prevents all areas of reality from being touched by divine grace. Precisely for this reason, we are invited to be concerned that Christian values are not aligned to it. It is in this sense that the book invites us to a healthy relationship with finance, taking advantage of temporal goods without harming Christian values. It is 
rather in the case of finance and economy, an attitude of thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord, for the resources he makes available to us, and which need to be distributed fairly and multiplied with sagacity and wisdom. I invite you to read, reflect, judge, and act, making your own resources more valuable and at disposal to promote the common good. Obrigada, Mateus, uh, for this invitation to live and share the common good. Um, so the economy of Francisco has a lot of seeds from Formation Academy um, initiatives. So, Luca, why don't we leave the common goods and wisdom by listening to them? Yes, let's go. Friends, it's great to see you here. It's a pleasure for me to be with you today. I am Adriana Gomez Chico from Mexico, and I will be moderating this session. It's time to enjoy the harvest. We are going to present now just a sample of some academic initiatives. A little bit of a lot that is going on within and around the economy of Francesco. But we know that the harvest doesn't happen in a day. We'll see, following three questions, a little bit of the process that it has been. How did this initiative start? How has it grown? What have been its fruits? Let's listen to some initiatives answering to these questions. First, to the first one, how did this initiative start? So please, Leonardo, go ahead. Ciao a tutti, io sono Leonardo, sono un dottorando di ricerca alla LUNSA. Yes, good afternoon everybody, I'm from uh, uh, La Nunza and in Valls, the National Institute for the Evaluation of Education and Training System 2021, data tell us that at the end of end of a school cycle, one in the two students does not achieve an acceptable level of learning in mathematics and Italian, and its share exceeds 70% in some regions of southern Italy. And the students are most exposed to educational poverty are those from disadvantaged social backgrounds. So what to do? My research stems from an encounter with Elaine, a teenage girl who had 20 absences and numerous insufficiencies in the first three months of high school. Together, for months, in addition to the homework, we have searched something that would motivate her deeply. At the end, we succeed. With the summer school at Laverna, I sense that a martyr happened to her. She has flourished because she had developed spiritual capital, this intrinsic strength that motivated her to her despite all adversity. And so my question, can spiritual capital be instrumental in addressing the dramatic learning crisis in Italy, especially in students most exposed to educational poverty? Thank you very much. Thank you. And Andres, it, the floor is yours. Um, roles build a theory in which participants need to be free, equal, and independent. However, according to Martin Nussbaum, this is a problem because individuals such as people with cognitive disabilities are not included in this theory. As a consequence, um, Nussbaum builds a new theory based on the two criteria that you see on the screen. Um, the result of this new theory is that it is able to include more people um, within its frames. However, there are some people that do not qualify, that do not meet these two criteria, such as children with anencephaly. My proposal is to base or to found uh, Nussbaum's criteria on a biological basis, such as the Homo sapiens condition. So the children, so the child with anencephaly would qualify as a human being because he has this um, Homo sapiens condition. As a result, um, this new theory would be able to include even more people as participants of a theory of justice. Thank you, Andres. And now, Sebastian, please go ahead. Muchas gracias, eh, Adriana. Eh, un ratito voy a compartir mi presentación. Eh, yeah. Hi, hola, yo me llamo Sebastián. Hago un doctorado en economía en Alemania. Y... Thank you very much, Adriana. So, yes, my name is Sebastián, and I do a PhD. And one year ago, I traveled to ACES to participate in the economy of Francesco, and this allowed me to connect with a lot of people all around in the world, especially in Latin America. And this event is also great uh, because I form an, a group on regards of inequality and I have a lot of contact with them. And this is how I work on the question how we can reduce chi children uh, or infant labor and to improve the situation of the children. I have traveled to Bolivia with this question and I have done service with children that need to work after school. And this is what I've been doing right now, thanks to the economy of Francesco. Thank you very much. 
Muito obrigada. Prazer a todos. Meu nome é Tatiana, sou doutoranda de economia. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Tatiana. I'm a PhD student in the economics in the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And my project, Michel's Economic, arose from the need to think about issues that cut across all the villages, issues that are concrete. After many meetings, debates, and reflections on the vocation and sustainability of the Monica system, in which we live, a group of creators from different villages launched a project called Mission Economy, inspired in the work of Professor Monica Mazzucato, who talks about mission-oriented policies. In other words, we think of frameworks of normative institutions that are feasible and that fight all problems of the systems in different realities. We think that regardless of the issue, of the theme, it's important to think about policies which are transformative of the order in which we live in, because only by changing normative institution will we achieve the common good. Thank you. And now let's focus on the second question. How has this initiative grown? Please go ahead, Jose Tomás. Muchas gracias, Adriana. Thank you very much, Adriana. The project that I would like to present on the economy of Francesco, you know that this project was developed since 2019 in the organization where I work. And this is an attempt of a magister diploma course having different academic certificate and also to participate in international congress. This project has grown together with the economy of Francesco, and I was able to introduce it in the workshop under the framework of the last year encounter. Also, it expresses my academic and professional growth with the professional and academic development that I was, I have been able to achieve, and even I have started a PhD program. Now let's listen to answer to the third question: What have been the fruits of the initiative? Muchas gracias. ¿Qué podemos decir de los frutos de la formación académica? Thank you very much. What can we say about the fruits of this academic situation in which we can include the proposals of the economy of Francesco by making it closer to the territory realities of our countries? This is my proposal since 2020, as all the richness that has been with you to share all this information and that has been to be applied from our territories. We can understand more than 30 academic assets and more than 30 videos where students have linked their theories with their territories. We have seen in them the passion for uh, academic researches that is moving the realities, hearts and heads also for a change in the economy. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. It has been great to listen to just this small sample of the great harvest that we have had within the economy of Francesco. Now let's listen to a few other initiatives. The fruit that I want to pronounce, uh, present to you is this one, ecological money. On finance, it's 25 chapters for a master's student. It is the fruit of four years of work by the members of the Committee on uh, Economy of Finance of the SDN Network in France, and we want to rebuild the basis of economics and finance in order for new generations to be able to uh, respect the Paris agreements. E colocamos clara como referência feminina, tão importante na economia que desejamos. 
Na cidade de Campinas, utilizamos a metodologia Paulo Freire. In Brazil, we formed regional nuclei of the Brazilian coordination of the economy of Francisco and placed Clara as a feminine reference, which is so important the economy we want. In the city of Campinas, we used Paulo Freire methodology, collectively creating trainings and projects. Hunger has reached 33 million people in our country. It is about applying Francisco and Clara's economy. We are transforming this reality in a solidarity uh, kitchen, for example, which offers 6,000 meals in a month. In additional educational and cooking workshop, vegetable gardens, growth and income generation activities. We have also formed the solidarity finance system on the youth cooperatives because we hunger beyond the hunger for food. It's what moves us and making this way of life is our proposal. The book Social Doctrine for the Common Man is one of the fruits of Francis' economy. In it we read, in short, the Church proposes an integral and solidarity humanism, capable of leading to a new social, economic and political order, founded on the freedom and dignity of the person, and exercised in peace, justice and solidarity. This is the task of proclaiming the social doctrine of the Church. Alongside it, there is another task, the denunciation of situations of violence and injustice, of ignored and violated rights, especially of the poor, the small, and here on air again, and thanks to Adriana, the Harvest team, and all the young people who participated. Yeah, we wanted to bring here many more initiatives from all around the world, uh, from, for example, from uh, Eastern Europe to Asia, and initiatives from entrepreneurship and, and much more. But we now are gonna watch a video from our friends in Burkina Faso. We asked Noel and Natasha how does partnering with government agencies facilitate many different realities. We're gonna watch this video now. The economy of France is uh, in the heart of the Sahel. At the end of this meeting, the economy of France's Burkina Faso acquired a legal status. France's economy is a global movement launched by the Pope, which calls for a more just, inclusive, humane economy. An economy that fights inequalities, but that accounts for the poor. And above all, it is an economy that protects the environment. So, as part of the economy of France, we have activities that take place locally. On the government level, we work with the Espoir for l'Environnement. It's an association. And that's a very small part of what we do. And um, we are also working from the church point of view to make the entire Episcopal Conference aware of our activities so that the Episcopal Conference can offer its support in order to generate entrepreneurs who are worthy of the economy of Francis. We are also working with journalists, especially to have a dialogue that is more focused on the environment. So see you for the big national launch in November. We can go to the Latin American corner of the world, so we have plenty of life over there from Mexico, Monterrey, the New Hub, to Costa Rica, Cuba. There's really a lot, but now we only have the time and possibility to have a Zoom to Argentina, for example, where uh, we have connected Valentina and Magali with us. Hola, hola, chicas. Buenas. Hola, Francesca. Hola, ¿qué Somos... tal? Un gusto tenerlas por aquí. Bueno, y sabemos que está pasando mucho en el país. Okay, so uh, welcome Magali, Valentina. We know that there are many projects there in Argentina and we would like to, to listen to the projects and the, the life of Economy of France is there. Hello Francesca, thank you very much for welcoming us here. Uh, we are very happy to, to be a part of this event. We are going to, to talk about the project of uh, Thomas Palmieri, about exclusion uh, he created a project to take uh, internet connections to vulnerable neighborhoods 
and uh, uh, to favor the possibility to access to educational materials. And we have also built uh, a university of peripheries through which uh, many labor unions and cooperatives are, bring, are uh, providing works to uh, those who uh, finish their, their jail periods and uh, we are favoring them uh, to find works and uh, we are also working on high school uh, seminars related to the different uh, villages of the economy of Francis and uh, in Rosario we have uh, developed a chair uh, for the uh, graduate uh, programs in economics to uh, uh, service learning methodologies in order to take their, their knowledge to community, especially uh, advising uh, uh, business impact here in our city. So these were some of the initiatives we wanted to tell us, to tell you about. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very nice uh, to know uh, these initiatives there in Argentina, and we praise everyone in Argentina. We will now conclude the session with a special and much anticipated link. We go live to Colombia, where Sneide and Jesus, together with many others, await on the last day of the third EOF LATAM Congress, whose wonderful title this year has been Tejiendo Economías para la Paz. Yeah. Hola, hola, hola. Hola, ¿nos escuchan? Sí, bueno. ¿No sí, los escucho. Hola, ¿estás escuchando? ¿Cómo están? ¿Bien? Sí. Yes. We can listen, listen to you perfectly. We are very thankful for this space to share our activities. It's, uh, we are very happy also to meet you here. So, uh, our, our first question is, um, after the first editions of uh, Economy of Francis in Latin America, returned to work this year, uh, working together with universities, civil society, governmental agencies, and we know we want to know, uh, uh, we want to go deep in, in within the, the, the subject or the matter of this encounter, uh, which is peace specifically. Yes, well, this is our third day of uh, this Congress. We have been deepening in four of the villages of Economy Francis, um, profit and uh, vocation, uh, business and peace, and other uh, two villages. Uh, the first day we will talk about uh, reconciliation and peace. Uh, many of the of the one who many of those who travel to Colombia had the possibility to share with most of the stakeholders that were involved during the peace process here in Colombia. And uh, we, we discussed how to make Colombia a more Franciscan country and to give that possibility from academia, students, uh, to contribute to that new economy. And today, uh, with this connection, we are going to close this third International Congress of Economy of Francis in Latin America. And, uh, we started in Brazil, the second one was in Argentina, and today here in Colombia. We are glad to announce the fourth Congress next year in Mexico. So uh, for us, it's, uh, it, it's a great news to share. And well, thank you very much. We Mexicans are, are very happy to welcome the fourth uh, Economy of Francis Latin, Latin America Congress next year in the land of mariachi, tequila, uh, natural landscapes uh, full of nice and uh, people, but also with great challenges and inequalities. So we hope to meet you here in, in Mexico, there in Mexico next year to continue building uh, peace uh, economies and uh, que viva Mexico. See you in 2024.
Hi everyone, this is Ricardo Flores from the Business and Peace Village from Economy of Francesco. Today I'm here with you to share and invite you to the lunch. Hello everyone, morning for peace. Our objective this is uh, Ricardo Flores from the Village the Business and Peace from the Economy of Francesco. I am here to share and invite you to the launch of our campaign, Money for Peace. Our goal is clear. We want to change the financial landscape and promote ethical investment. We know that together we can build a positive change. This is a call for action and uh, to build a, a, a new economy and uh, be aware of our, about our new announcements and we hope you Join us in our in this new journey. Thank you very much. See you soon. In the EOF uh, generation around the world today, uh, those we have been able to mention, believe it or not, are just a few examples of the fruitful life in different places and contexts. Yeah, absolutely. So a thought and message of gratitude and encouragement goes out to all the young people still committed, you know, and that we couldn't mention directly today, but we know they are working hard to change the world and to make this EUF an increasingly strong and impactful reality. So thank you and everyone over the world. And now we just go, we, we got the floor to Luca and uh, let's find out what's happening today. Cari amici, vi invito a fare un patto per cambiare l'attuale economia. Ridate un'anima all'economia. Quelle parole hanno Dear friends, I invite you to make a pact to change the current economy. Remember these words? This invitation to Francis addressed to us four years ago. Give back a soul to the economy. Those words literally swept through the lives of thousands of young people around the world. And words matter. And yes, we would like to celebrate the birthdays. The birthdays to remind ourselves of the new life this world have managed to spark. And today we want to do that with two words, which blew particularly important council this year. On August 28th, we celebrated the 60th anniversary of Martin Luther King's speech on the steps of the Abraham Lincoln Memorial. I have a dream. These are the words that were etched in the history that day and forever. So that even though you will face difficulties I have a dream. Martin Luther King's dream, dream helped people looking beyond expectation because this is promise and Dalla profezia alla parola, un passaggio che non è facile. important from prophecy to words. This is not easy. How can we just embrace prophecy in a word? Just in closing a prophecy in a word, to find a charism in words, it's the same toil, the same sense of unspeakable frustration that Francis of Assisi suffered to arrive in the definition of the real rule of for his priors, 12 short chapters that turn 800 years old today. It was uh, the drafting of the rule was a real travail for Francis of Assisi and his priors, his orders, the promise God himself had made to him now appear to be in a disarray, divided, and so that when a prophecy becomes worse, can be concrete. This is the second birthday of the words that we would like to celebrate together with Martin Luther King's dream. The dream and the rule, two words that seem to be the antithesis of each other, prophecy and word, charism and institutions, two anniversaries that fall in the 2023 edition of Economy of Princes that leave an important mark on this journey. Thank you very much, Luca, grazie. So inspiring again. Uh, well, Enrique, we are approaching the end of this of this e event, you know. We would have liked yeah. to, to tell many more things, but now we we had lived a gathering made of beautiful moments, a program written by multiple hands, actually, a story told by many voices. We could see many of the authors of this event and some other protagonists worked behind the scenes so that we could be on air today. 
And to all of them, as well as to the sound technicians, uh, video operators, those who manage the different streams, translators, directors, our wonderful friends at Kaleidon, uh, we, we would like to go uh, we would like to give you all our gratitude and appreciation for your friendship, passion, and quality of your work. Yeah, and now, you know, we go to the yeah. special moment of, the, of this program because, let's see, lo last August, EOF has launched the Stories We Are contest. It was a storytelling exercise open to multiple artistic expressions to tell about to the world, but also each other, how it is possible to imagine a new integral economy. So we collected ideas that spread in the form of, in the form of stories, images, poems, and notes. Yeah, we are only at the beginning of this narrative challenge, but the participation in the first edition of the contest has been simply amazing. Almost a hundred entries were received in just over a month to enter the contest. Uh, works arrived uh, in six languages from 22 countries yeah. around the whole world, 24 poems, 14 letters, 15 fig figurative works and more videos, songs, di uh, diary pages, short stories, graphic novels, and even a video game. Yeah, we were already aware of that actually, but now we are sure. So economists, entrepreneurs, and change makers in EOF are also artists. So it is thanks to these artists that alongside the know-how, a typical concept in, in economics, you know, we can also discover the know-why, which is the deep meaning of things and actions. And Wow, this is so beautiful, the yeah, know why. The know why. Yeah, we want to sincerely thank all the participants. Each of the works received is a valuable and irreplaceable piece of the whole EOF narrative, narrative capital and will be shared with the community from now on. And now, let's finally find out Time. the winners of the first edition of the Stories We Are contest. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, the contest actually saw many categories. So we have the first category, which is the visual art, and we have inside um, several aspects. So we've got, we start with photography, and the winner, go, the winner is Profumo di Casa by Elvira Occhi Pinti e Padre Gianni Treglia from Italy. So it has been chosen for the expressive power of the work. The chosen subject, subtitled by, by the text of a poem, narrates the phenomenon of migration by restoring centrality to people without, it, without neglecting the cultural and social complexity of migration. All right, still on, cat, on the category visual art, we go now to painting, and we have from Portugal, from João Magalhães, Disequilibrium for, uh, for being able to inter interpret the urgencies of the contemporary with their work and combining emotional and visual languages effectively. Yeah, we are still in the category visual art, but we have a video game this time. So the prize goes to The Last Drop by Eleonora Kitti from Italy and for the creativity of the project used to bring younger people closer to ecological issues through an inclusive and accessible language from a technical and scientific background. Now we change to the category song. We have uh, Cambio by Julian Corradini, uh, whose nickname is Julico, also from Italy. Uh, rhythmic, rhythmic exhortation to take personal action for conveying with positive energy the urgency of paradigm change. Right. Now let's go to the category short tail. Formiguinhas, Ormigas by Flavia Naves from Brazil has been chosen for dealing with the topic of women's work and solidarity among women in a tender and pleasant but still powerful style. Now we switch to the category poetry. Tela em Branco by Maria do Céu Silva from Portugal for giving voice to and involving the youngest children. A message of concrete hope entrusted to a poem with fresh and effective language. Right, and let's switch to the category podcast now. Allow me to speak in, in Portuguese a little bit because the prize goes to Serie Especial do Podcast Educação Financeira para a Vida As Histórias que Somos Well said <laughs> Ana, Carolina, Ana Carolina Fernandes Alves and Augusto Luis Pinheiro Martins from Brazil 
So as part of a larger project, this podcast interestingly devotes several episodes to exploring spiritual and narrative and social capital. And in the category letter, we, ha we have here a tide prize. Yeah. It, uh, it's Carta by Guilherme Augusto Oliveira Pedroso and Carta para todos os jovens que olham as oportunidades lá longe do Alto dos Morros e Comunidades by Leticia de Lima da Silva, both from Brazil. Uh, for the young age of the authors who bring with vivid realism the reader into their personal experience as a point of observation of major global challenges. Very good. We now go to another category, which is journaling or diary. So the title is EOF Summer School in Laverna Reflections by Ivana Boyko from Ukraine. It has been chosen for the essential and timely contribution that expresses in an engaging way the lived experience. And last, ca last category, video. EOF Letters Through Time by Nayeli Perez Negron and Marcia King from Mexico and Peru. For such a fresh and original narrative of their friendship, interpenetrated sorry, by the story of EOF and for being a kind of generative fuel for other relationship and renewed commitment. So congratulations to all of you, but also to all the others who participated because we really have a full heritage of wonderful piece of art. And uh, especially this word, the winner words, will be donated to the Pope. And uh, the special prizes are, you can see them, are handicrafts made, made by the Seraphic children, supported by the, their assistants. And you know, it's uh, the result, these, these items uh, represent a path not only creative, but a real rehabilitation process of their manual skills. We know well, how, how much they are fragile, so it's a wonderful prize. Amazing prize. Um, you will find, you will be able to find in the website all the winners and their details and also some other words selected for each category uh, that have been awarded with the special mentions by the contest committee too. So go there and check it. Dear friends, I'm writing to invite you to take part in an initiative very close to my heart. With these words of Pope Francis, the story of the economy of Francesco begins on May the 1st, 2019. A wonderful story of which we have told just some wonderful pages today through some of the faces and voices of its actors. Yeah, and we did it once again here from Assisi. Symbol, of, symbol and message of a humanism, of fraternity and peace under the gaze of the other Francis, the poor man of Assisi. A continuing source of inspiration for all of us, for an economy friendly to the poor and to the earth. Yeah, and throughout all this time, Pope Francis has always been close to us with trust, friendship and prayer by giving us every year a new letter, a new message dedicated to the youth of Economy of Francesco, to each one of us, to encourage us to work together and keep dreaming big, to bring out our ideas and dreams, and through them bring prophecy and beauty to the world. Also this year, Francis has given us new words that we now will listen to. Carissime e carissimi giovani, è bello ritrovarvi a un anno dall'evento di Assisi. Dearly beloved young people, it is good to find you one year after the Assisi event and to know that your work to receive the economy is going forward with fruit, enthusiasm and commitment. You have often heard me say that reality is superior to the idea. 
And yet, ideas inspire. And there is one idea that, ever since I was a young theology student, has fascinated me. In Latin, it is called the coincidencia oppositorum, that is, the unity of opposi. According to this idea, reality is made up of opposite poles, pairs that are in opposition to each other. Some examples are the great and the small, race and freedom, justice and love, and so on. What to do with these opposites? Certainly, one can try to choose one and eliminate the other. Or, as the authors I used to study, in the attempt to reconcile the opposites, one could make a synthesis, avoiding erasing one pole or the other in order to resolve them in a higher plane, where, however, the tension is not eliminated. The young people, every theory is partial, limited, cannot claim to completely encapsulate or resolve opposites. So too is every human project. Reality always eludes. So, as a young Jesuit, this idea of the unity of opposites seemed to me an effective paradigm to un for understanding the Church's role in history. If you think about it, however, it is useful for understanding what is happening in today's economy big and small, poverty and wealth, and so many other opposites are also there in economics. Economy are the market stocks, as well as the hubs of international finance. There is the concrete economy made up of bases, glances, people, small banks and businesses. And there is the economy so big that it, it seems abstracts of multinational corporations, states, banks, investment funds. There is the economy of money, bonuses, and very high salaries next to the economy of care, of human relationships, of salaries that are too low to live with dignity. But where is the coincidence between these opposites? It is found in the authentic nature of the economy to be a place of inclusion and cooperation, continuous generation of value to be created and circulated with others. The small needs the great, the concrete, the abstract. The contract needs the give. Poverty needs shared wealth. Toutefois, ne l'oubliez pas. Ma non dimentichiamo. Non dimenticatelo, ci sono opposizioni. L'économie qui ne coïncide pas avec une économie qui fait vivre. L'économie des richesses énormes pour quelques-uns ne s'harmonise pas de l'intérieur avec les trop nombreux pauvres qui n'ont pas les moyens de vivre. Le gigantesque commerce des armes n'aura jamais rien de commun the giant weapon commerce, for example, has nothing in common with the economy of peace. The economy that pollutes and actually destroys the planet cannot find any synthesis with those respecting it and protecting it. And it is important, and this is the heart of the new economy for which you are engaging. The economy that kills, that excludes, that pollutes, that produces war, is not an economy. The thing that some people call economy is actually only a void, an absence. It's an illness, a perversion of the economy in itself and its vocation. The weapons produced and sold for the wars the profits realized at the expense of the most vulnerable people and defenseless, like the ones that are leaving their land to look for a better life, the exploitation of the people and the resources, all this is not economy. 
it's not a good view of the reality that we should actually seek. It is just tyranny, violence. It is just a system that we need to uh, get rid of for humanity. I would then like to propose to you a second idea that is very close to my heart, linked to what I have just told you about the tensions within the economy. The economy of the earth and the economy of the way, of the journey. The economy of the earth comes from the first meaning of the word economy, that of caring for the home. Home is not just the physical place where we live, but it is our community, our relationships. It is the cities we inhabit, our roots. We can also say that home is the whole world, the only one we have, entrusted to all of us. By the mere fact of being born, we are called to become guardians of this common home and therefore, brothers and sisters, of every inhabitant of the earth. Doing economy means taking care of the common home. And this will not be possible if we do not have eyes trained to see the world starting from the peripheries, from the eyes of the excluded, of the least. Until now, the vision of the home that has been imposed has been that of men, of males, and generally men from the West and the North. Among other things, we have neglected for centuries the vision of women. If they had been present, they would have made us see fewer goods and more relationships, less money and more re redistribution, more attention to the haves and to the have-nots, more concrete things and fewer abstractions, more substance and less talk. We can no longer continue to exclude different views from economic practice and theory, nor from the life of the church. Therefore, a special joy of mine is to see how many young women are protagonists of the economy of Francesco. The integral economy is one that is done with and for the poor in all the different forms of being poor today. The excluded, the invisible, those whose voice is not heard. We need to be there on the fault lines of history and existence. And for those dedicated to the study of economics, also on the peripheries of thought, which are no less important. So ask yourself, what are the peripheries of economic science today? It is not enough to think only about the poor and for the poor, but with the poor and with those who are excluded. Even in theology, we have too often studied the poor, but we have studied very little with the poor. From being the object of science, they must become subjects, because each person has stories to tell, has a thought about the world. The first poverty of the poor is that they are excluded from having their say, excluded from the very possibility of expressing a thought that is considered serious. This is a matter of dignity and respect, which are too often denied. Eis, portanto, a economia do caminho. Se olharmos a experiência de Jesus e dos primeiros discípulos, é precisamente aquela do filho do homem que não tem onde reclinar a cabeça. Son of the man who doesn't know where to look. One of the oldest way to describe Christians is those of the way. Those. And when Francisco também é start his revolution, also economic, in the name of the Bible, he's a walker, a homeless. He left leaving San Francesco. He left leaving the house of Bernardoni, the father, a good home. So what's the way of whom wants to form a economy through the pilgrims? Aquele que se encaminha deve reconhecer rapidamente. The one that goes must recognize fast that depends on the others on the way. Que a economia também mendiga das outras disciplinas e conhecimentos. E como o peregrino sabe que a sua viagem será 
muito importante. And how the peregrine know, how the walker know his way is going to be supported. So you know, the common good demands demands from us a lot. We have to dirty our hands. We ha only those who know how to dirty the hands knows how to transform the land. The charity and the solidarity comes from dirty your hands. You have to be courageous. Francisco hoje significa sermos necessariamente mulheres e homens de paz. Não ter paz enquanto não houver paz. Not to have peace while there is no peace. Dear youth, don't be afraid of tensions and conflicts. Try to inhabit them and live in, li in, li in life them every day. I trust you with the task of protecting the common house and have the courage to walk. É difícil. Pero sé que puedes lograrlo porque ya lo están haciendo. It is difficult, but I know you can achieve it because you are already doing it. So, yes, I can imagine how you are inserting your efforts and sharing the your dreams in your churches. Before different economic realities of your territories, the reality is already configured and as a terrain in which there has not been rain for a long time. I wish you to have a lot of genius and patience in order to establish and get to know more stable and fruitful links. The, I wish for a new world that is very extended, more than it seems. Please do not enclose yourselves as oases in the, the oasis in the desert are places that you may have access to and the puzzle that you need to solve in which you will become out differently. So be awake and look with determination and enthusiasm to your colleagues, to your citizens, to your priests, and here I repeat that the poor people will go along with you, give voice and form to a world, because the solutions and the economy to this world that you're experiencing may involve the life of everybody else. There is more space for you than what could seem today. Therefore, I ask you to remain actively united, building up on operating questions, real bridges among the or between the continents that will take the humanity from the colony age and from the inequalities. See the faith in the project uh, towards a universal fraternity. Be kind and generous from the economic and entrepreneurship life where a human development is going to be achieved. I trust you and never forget that I love you a lot. Wow, well, dear Pope Francis. <sighs> También nosotros te queremos mucho, de verdad. Querido, dear Pope Francis, we also love you very much, and we thank you a lot. who are giving voice to Francis' words, you know, and they, they actually, they let us leave this special moment. Now, we, there's not too many comments to add, actually, except a huge thank you. I don't know, we don't know you at home, but actually here at the small theater, we feel so touched, you know, and we, we really want to, to give a strong reply. We are there. We do believe in this new economy with a soul. So we, we can just respond, you, Pope Francis, with our proactivity and uh, wish to change the world uh, yeah. In, yeah, in a serious way. <laughs> so we, we don't joke yeah and for to all economists and entrepreneurs who care about peace and justice we say the economy of Francesco is for each one of them there are thousand ways to leave the economy in the name of Francis and in EOF there is room for all everyone who gets in the process is central no one is periphery 
Exactly. So we welcome every single word from the Pope and uh, as a live program and a clear map for the future, you know. And now it's really time to say goodbye. So ah. we are grateful once again to all those of you who've been connected, but also uh, organizing uh, local initiatives. We know that you are a lot from Monterrey, Mexico to the Emirates to Bangladesh or other many other countries from Africa and all the rest that we can't mention now, but we really send a warm greeting to you all. And now what to say? Just a couple of days of rest and then see you again on Monday. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we really invite you to join the community, to keep following, you know, and be part of the change all together, yeah. acting in the many places where the economy of Francesco is being built, lived and experienced. Let me just add a special yeah. greetings to our Italians, you know, uh, sure. they are opening the national events just right now. So, un carissimo saluto a voi ragazzi, buon evento e ci vediamo presto. Yeah. I also send greetings to, to you, Italians, and... Special ongoing process. Remember, this is an ongoing in process we have come to the end yeah now and always always remember our promise to Pope Francis we are also his legacy we are also St. Francis legacy bye to all and see you again very, very soon, soon. <laughs> bye bye ciao, ciao. ciao. grazie bye.